Hello, everyone. It's Wednesday. Welcome back to Recall Knowledge Presents Outlaws of Alkenstar, a show where Pathfinder enthusiasts play through your favorite adventure path. I'm a GM, Steve, and I'm joined by Ricardo, Richard, Nina, and Tommy. Go ahead, everyone, and say howdy, outlaws. Howdy! Howdy, outlaws! <laughs> everyone joining us for the first time, welcome. Everyone who's joining us again has been with us before. Welcome back. We're happy you're with us again. A lot of OGL news as, you know, Rich is making some timely jokes that will, you know, age appropriately forever. In like two years when someone's watching this video, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. on from today, the dystopia on the other side, they'll watch the good times from way back yep. when. Today on January 18th, 2022, Google it. You could maybe figure out what Richard was talking about from like, you know, 2024. But anyways, we left off last week neck deep in the cradle of course after fighting the time dog and you guys are literally licking your wounds at the moment which it's fun for my end to see you guys on the back foot but i know you guys are feeling in way over your head so we'll get through the announcements pretty fast so we can get to playing tonight we don't have a lot let's just say our first announcement for the night this episode is once again sponsored by our friends Molten do, 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 do. hosting. They're so hot. <laughs> Hotter than our Tom fills. I'm gonna buy an electric drum kit just so. No, I no. Do, 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 do is how it is. And as Richard alluded to, with the OGL hubbub going on over the last few weeks, molten hosting is definitely put into like an awkward spot. Right? Was Wizards of the Coast planning to release their own virtual tabletop? It was assumed by many that VTTs like Foundry might get caught in the crossfire. You know, we don't play 5e here, we play Pathfinder, but 5e makes up a big chunk of Foundry's sort of player base, and, you know, anything that affects Foundry could have some spill out into us. So there's been a lot of concern, a lot of worry, but luckily for us, Molten Hosting was able to get in contact with Wizards of the Coast directly, and they've reached out to us to help get the message to a wider audience at large, wow. right? Again, we're always so humbled when these places choose our platform to spread their message because they know we have such a wide reach. So thanks, Molten Hosting, for setting that up. And honestly, we need to get, you know, they want to, they, they have very limited time, so let's get to it without much further ado. Help us welcome, with a nice round of applause, onto our show, the president of Wizards of the Coast, Cynthia William, who we incorrectly attributed as the CEO in a previous episode, and the VP of Digital Publishing, David Schwartz. Uh, thank you for having us on here to finally clear the air. Yes, there's been a lot of emotion in the community recently, which we... We get because our fans love the game so much, but we need to dig in deep and only talk about the facts. Well, thanks for being here. So let's start with an easy one. Why are you changing the OGL in the first place? Well, the OGL was written during a time before what we internally call the uh, digital revolution. At the time, the internet was in relative infancy and our OGL reflected that by omitting common media formats that we use today. Things like YouTube didn't exist yet, the concept of uh, a uh, what was that again? Um, NFTs uh, wasn't heard of. This new version allows us to clear up some misconceptions about what our intentions were. Okay, fair enough. So what are some of these misconceptions that we're talking about? Well, for one, we never intended for our license to allow for other corporations to profit without us. When we released 4th edition and abandoned the OGL, we intended for that to increase our bottom line. But it had the opposite effect. That, and that led to the creation of Pathfinder 1E, which we did not like. And we want to prevent that from happening again. Wow, that's sort of a blunt answer. So, just... You're admitting here the reason you're ditching the OGL is because you don't like the competition that games like Pathfinder have given you? That's one aspect. Another is virtual gaming. Right, and that's we've heard that you are developing your own VTT. Is that right? I can answer this one, Cynthia. 
COVID-19 hit everyone all over the globe hard. And at Wizards, we were not immune. Did you know that during COVID, TTRPGs being played online jumped up 400%? Wow, I mean, that, that sounds great for you. Wrong, because we weren't getting our cut. Websites like D&D Beyond thrived, but in a world where everyone played digitally, we just weren't set up to actually sell anything outside of books. I mean, didn't anyone realize we never even provided PDFs of our guides? Tasha's sold more copies on D&D Beyond than we ever printed. Why didn't anybody think of our bottom line? So the D&D Beyond purchase was a way to save face with your shareholders? Let's, let's face it. People who buy Hasbro stock don't know a dungeon from a dragon. All they know is the bottom line. And that's why we did it. We realized we could start selling people the same book twice to get our foot into the market in the virtual space. And then the payday would start rolling in. It, it's common knowledge that D&D is under monetized. The number one money maker in the gaming market is in mobile gaming, subscriptions, loot boxes. Kids don't want to quest to find that holy avenger. They want to purchase a 10 loot box bundle with a guaranteed epic and a one out of a hundred chance for that epic to be a legendary that could, could be a holy avenger. It's more exciting that way. And that is why we are launching our own exclusive VTT. We are changing the model going forward. You know how character creation can be confusing. Even though 5e removed almost all choices, the biggest feedback we got was that it was too complicated. Can't be true. In our VTT, you just buy random characters until you find one you like and play it. But it's not just characters, it's loot as well. Don't like not having a plus one weapon because your GM is worried about balance? Show it off to your friends with that legendary item if you're lucky enough to pull it off from a pack. I mean, that sounds pretty terrible if I'm being honest. I think most DMs just won't allow that at their tables. Possibly, but... That's why we've started to replace the DM as well with our patented wizard GPT AI technology. Players won't need DMs to run their games. Simply purchase a DM wizard tier subscription or or higher on D&D Beyond and you can get access to a customized AI that will run your games for you. With it running thousands of games per day, you will have more experience than even Matt Mercer or Brennan Lee Mulligan. It's a win-win. A win for wizards making money and a win for the community who get to give us more money. This sounds so much worse than we could have imagined before this interview. Oh, does it? Does it make you want to cry? Boo-hoo! Wizards is so mean! You suck it up. You didn't care when we consistently release questionable material in our games and promise to do better while not changing a thing. You won't care when we do this because we're D&D. &D. Oh, yeah. And to add insult to injury, all D&D &D Beyond accounts who uncancel their sub and use the code recall knowledge. One word. One, one word. word. <laughs> and you can get your you can get one free month. Stop that. What's What are you guys doing? You're supporting them? That's our bit. Not anymore. The new OGL we are <laughs> releasing allows us to take control of anything that has ever been associated with our brand. It's buried in the uh, the 20 plus pages of le legal speak. Wow. It sounds to me like the mask has come completely off. Is there any final message you'd like to leave the millions of people watching this interview with? Oh, definitely. We here at Wizards apologize for our previous drafts of the OGL. It was never intended as anything more than a feedback request from our partners. We vow for ultimate transparency going forward and regret anything that may have affected our bottom line. We promise that 
Our new VTT platform will be fully inclusive and support everything that makes this game, the community, great. Because ultimately, all that matters to, to us is your respect and paycheck. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, everyone. Straight from the mouth of Wizards of the Coast themselves. Thank you, I guess. Cynthia Williams and David Schwartz for coming and setting the record straight. Anytime, Steve. Thank you again for having us here. All the times I've had to play tyrannical despots on the internet for money, I've never had to be a corporate one before. That was a strange experience. Yeah, I mean, the sad part is this didn't even, like, it's like, well, this just sounds like a conversation that could actually happen. Thanks, Wizards of the Coast. This is been a very sad demoralizing sponsor bit brought to you by molten hosting thanks molten hosting for sponsoring Ooh, this show tonight if you personally want a way to show wizards how much they suck consider switching to a service that makes them no money sign up today at moltenhosting.com it's a cloud hosting server for foundry vtt it's clip it's kept completely clear from all the wizards of vtt nonsense it's the service we use here on the show and we urge you to use them for your game too. And unlike Wizards of the Coast, for us at checkout, you can actually use the code Recall Knowledge. One, one word. One word. Oops, sorry. During checkout, and you can get your first month of service completely free on the house. Thanks, Molten Hosting. Now, if anyone out there knows how to buy some of those Holy Avenger NFT packs, send the information my way because I'm totally gonna get rich off them. I think comes I comes in a two pack with the Trump NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where's the kick button? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, in all seriousness, the 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 bleak apocalyptic vision that I have of Wizards VTT landscape is probably not too far out of the realm of possibility. That's the sad part. Uh, you can't kick me from the table because I bought the uh, anti-snowflake NFT. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I The one interesting thing that's it's having lots of twists and turns, even like today as we're going live, there's more stuff coming out because D&D Beyond put out a whole like, you know, everyone's taking things out of context. But like, if I'm not mistaken, they completely advertise the fact that they're going to have like AI GMs, right? That was like a, a bullet point in something that they've released. But then D and D Beyond saying that they're not working on that at all, so I don't know. I don't know. Lots of information out there, people. You're big and grown. You can figure it out. Make sure to sift through false information. Wait for official releases. That being said, our show here tonight is 100% non-parody and is actually communications from the actual Cynthia Williams and David Schwartz. Check check with your lawyer under your desk. Let me just ask my lawyer. Desk lawyer, one tell me that I'm important. He says I'm important. My lawyer texted me and said they quit. So oh, I really? take okay. that for what she <laughs> could. <laughs> if, if you, yeah, I'll probably just hire the rules lawyer instead. It'll be easier. I wonder if he watches <sighs> this. What's up, Hi. Ronald? He used to watch us back in the day. He used to comment on our videos and check in our live streams. And we appreciate but, uh, him for more ways yeah. in more ways than one. It's nice when they're all the discourse is happening and it's just like talking heads on the internet. Hi, it's me. I'm one of the talking heads on the internet. But then there's like someone who actually has a background in the stuff. It's a good person to have in our court. Yeah, he, he used to make most of his comments were making sure that like correcting us on the rules or just telling us we were doing the rules right when we didn't believe in ourselves. So, <laughs> what is he, some kind of rules lawyer? <laughs> exactly. I can't eye roll hard enough. <laughs> Thanks, Ronald. All right, I've laughed about the dystopia. I'm ready to get killed by a time dog now. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's let's fight some time dogs. Time dogs. Time to pet the danger dog. No petting the danger dog. <laughs> Look how the danger starts. <laughs> okay, I'll say this: one hero point for anyone who attempts to pet the danger dog. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then die. One that doesn't count for how dog. So I'm just gonna go grab Sylvia. <laughs> Yeah, one interact action. No big deal. Rick, you ready to start up a dance party? 
<laughs> All right, everyone, that's going to do it for announcements. Viewers, go ahead, sit back, and relax. Oh, players, let's jump into it. There we go. <laughs> Episode 10 of Outlaws of Alchemist Star Cradle of Quartz, written by Scott D. Young. Let's go. Our camera fades in high over the spell scar desert pointed at a very intricate looking quartz temple known in the temple of Bri as the cradle of quartz lost to time erased from the logic of design and removed from any reference outside of old heretical texts our outlaws find themselves in a bit of a bind as they stepped in last week and during their explorations came face to face with a strange creature that appeared to teleport around the temple at will to emerge from the walls and to create wounds with nothing more than a gaze, bloodless wounds all over their targets. Seemingly unable to deal any damage and with a recall knowledge check from the spell scar desert or the mana waste expert, Hal Brent, realized that this is what's known in the mana waste as the elusive time dog. They hightailed it out the front door, retreating to relative safely, safety. And I believe you guys have decided that we are kind of setting up a small camp, kind of on a cliff overlooking the front of the temple, the cradle. And so our camera does fade in. There's probably a campfire kind of crackling and our four outlaws with a giant Wybert sort of in a stationary position near the huddle comes into focus and we hear their conversation pick up and the scene is yours. So Saruk is going to pull what I can only assume is grilled buzzard tail from the fire, except no substitutions. Thinking about it, racking his brain, is there anything that I can roll to identify what the hell that was. That's a good question. So you haven't made any of the recall knowledge checks yet, right? Right. I think it was only how so far. Yeah. Uh, let me see here really quick. We're getting off the start. Also, I watched Twitch is giving a zero point to Sarut. I appreciate you. We are going to fucking need it. <laughs> Earn your chat, your hero coins by watching on Twitch, and you can cash in to help our outlaws because they may need it. Um, <laughs> may nothing. So the default check without a very specific lore on this is occultism. Okay. So 
Saruk being very high intelligence and having leveled now into Investigator much more, I'm trained in every skill in the game except for performance as of right now, before all of the lores that I staple on him. So occultism is something I can do. What are your current investig your current leads? Uh you know what? I think this time dog is a lead now. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. Yeah, so take your uh your investigator bonus on that one. All right. Question marks. Question marks. Question marks it is. Very nice. So is there a specific thing you're trying to go for on this uh investigation? Just recall knowledge. I think thinking about it the most oh lordy out of character we spent a lot of time in the discord planning this but this part i didn't think about heck i think saruk mostly wants to try to determine what the hell it was or if it's possible that it can be reasoned with or why it is attacking us in the first place is it associated with Bry? did we fuck up by going in there is it some is this why the archives are incomplete got it okay what's what's the best place to pet it <laughs> no 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 okay so racking your brain you know, using all your investigative leads, all the knowledge you have packed up, anything you've learned and researched in your entire investigative career, you do come up with a nugget of information of something that is in, seems to be in the realm or at least neighboring adjacency to this creature. And that is, this creature seems to be a variation of something which is known as a Hound of Tindalos. And a Hound of Tindalos is a creature that exists outside of time. It, it doesn't perceive time the way we do. It doesn't perceive reality the same way we do. Its home, in fact, is the dimension of time. And for it to be transferred from that dimension to ours is not something that happens commonly. Some people might do rituals to call them to our realm but that usually is met with disaster generally speaking if a hound of tindalos is present it's because somebody something is messing with the natural flow of time and these things are there to stop that from happening and stop reality from breaking due to things like time travel. And that means a lot of what you've heard and researched seem to revolve around the idea that this Cradle of Quartz might have been a place where time travel was possible, where time behaved differently. Maybe there's a nugget of truth if this thing is actually here. The mana wastes continue to be a fascinating and dangerous place. I wasn't expecting to encounter a hound of Tindalos out here. Hound of what now? They're from the dimension of time. I read about them a very long time ago. They they come to uh, Saruk like tap tap taps the ground in response to well, unless they're called people fucking with time. So whatever's going on in there, the hound isn't... How best to frame this? Maybe better to just jump to the conclusion of the hypothesis. I, I don't think we can fight it, and hopefully, if we can get in, presumably convince Kosawana to not do whatever in each and every hell he's doing, maybe the dog goes away. Presumably it also sees us as part of the problem, though. Right, because I shot it. Hit it square in the face. Didn't do a damn thing to it. Yeah, that tracks. My bum did scratch it a little bit. But I'm not sure I could actually 
make more of it. Still clutching her rib because Anita is badly injured. Zaruk, you do you need any help? I do, but it can it can wait. I'll be all right. It's uh, Sir turns to where, like, there are probably very large scars from that cobra on his neck. I really, grand scheme of things, I guess I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> Past me would not believe that. So what do we do? We still have to get Kosawana. I suppose we do. I... Maybe I'm thinking 20 steps ahead here. Let's hear it. I wonder if we don't, and this is, consider this the turbo last case scenario plan. If Mugland wants him, and Mugland's bumblebees want him, and they're coming here, presumably they would. Perhaps we can kill two rocks with one stone. But... If Kosawana is wanted by nods over to Refi, then we have a friend, and that friend could be helpful tearing apart nods back to Alkinstar. I mean, wasn't the rumor Kosawana was like touched by time? Maybe that's his that's his dog, you know, like Seal, that's his bloodless hound, as it were. If that is the case, then we have two very powerful friends. Shudder at the thought. In any case, I think we shouldn't engage with it. I think we should get in, stay close, stay close to me so Kijok and I can shrug off some of the things that will come at you. Get in, find the man, get out of this place, and hopefully that Saruk reaches down to his pack, withdraws a smoke stick, and begins like twirling it. I don't know if this is going to be the most foolproof, but I'm pretty sure I had to look at that thing before and then, like, removes gauntlet. There are several bloodless cuts running up his forearm. This should conceal us. It it would be helpful if there were more. I, I could make some. I just need help taking off my, uh, my work table from Wyvert's ass. It's not a sentence you hear every day. It's not. <laughs> it's in there. It has the most space. Wyber is her giant robotic companion that has a storage compartment in his butt. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. It's not weird. Welcome, Raiders. It's, it's, where, you, it's where you keep <laughs> the best things, right? Right. No, that sounds like a great plan to uh, Saru. But I think you are right about being 20 steps ahead. What are we going to do right now? Right now, we are going to eat Blizzard Tail. We are going to lick our wounds. We are going to pray to whatever gods will listen. Actually, and then glance over to Hal. You think there's more than one entrance to that place? Maybe there's somewhere that the... I'm going to keep calling it Time Dog because it's... This is how I'm coping, but maybe we can go in somewhere it's not looking. I know that there were those windows on the side that were, you know... You can kind of see in and we can get around, but we haven't gone around the back. We haven't looked anywhere. I mean, the sun goes down a little bit. I have a much better chance of, you know, scouting around. <laughs> do you both want me to do a quick patch up before you all like go out and explore more entrances to the, to the cave? I was thinking I might run back to the ship, let folks know that we've encountered heavier resistances, maybe on the off chance it's not an off chance. The high probability that Gattleby is carrying enough ordnance to blow the ship sky high. You know, uh, that might be very useful for us right now. As long as you don't do it alone, because remember, Halbert already saw those weird birds that were flying around. Who knows if there would be more on your way back to the ship. You're not wrong. Ruffy, you feel like going on a walk? Yeah, why not? I don't know walk off a bit of these scratches. I realize that means we're leaving Anita alone. I'm all right. Why, but it's here. You sure? I'll hide. All right, if you're sure. Wait, let me patch you up real quick. Yeah, yeah. And then Saru sits down, removes armor. It is probably, I, 
there are several slashes up our bodies from where something looked at us and then we got cut up. So I imagine the act of removing armor over that is not great. So 10 minutes with assurance to the eight. Ooh, nice. 25 points for you. How long until sundown and how long will it take them to go and get back? Because if they walk up to the hill, they're probably like half hour out from the ship and then half hour back. Uh, in my head, I'm picturing the sh the trek from the ship in is probably like an hour each way. You guys would have parked just outside Tentacle Canyon where it was safest to more to like dock the ship. Um, this cradle is in an area of the Spellscar Desert, which is referred to as Tentacle Canyon. And there's like basically there's lots of like high cliffs here that sort of make weird patterns that you can kind of like navigate your way through. Cradle of Quartz is luckily for you guys pretty much right on the outside of it. It's not like deep in the heart of it, so it's not too hard to find your way in and out. So I'd say it's probably like an hour to the ship and then an hour back. And you guys are probably camping just a few minutes from the thing. Um, I think we're still I think we're still probably a good four or five hours from sunset. Oh, so I could wait with Anita. Yeah, you didn't spend too much time, right, in the Cradle of Quartz. You, all in all, I think you guys spent maybe an hour at tops and you guys it, so it's still pretty early in the day it's like mid-afternoon i think high noon as some people would say we could go back together and then come back and camp out here and i'll probably have to take a look around we could wait till it's mid noon and then sleep till it's low noon and then what's after low noon hopefully not our deaths to a hound of tindalos I think you were bumped in the head too much, Ruffy. So let me do a medicine check on you for 10 minutes with assurance. You too, Halbrant, before we all set off. Oh, 19 hit points for you. And then Halbrant, 18 for you, Halbrant. Thank you. I'm almost back to new. Me as well. All right, I'm going to ride on Wybert while we do this trek, if you all don't mind. So we're going to take a, a trip back to the airship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. We're not splitting the party. I'm over here with my hands like, oh, man, I could do, like, four separate encounters run at the same time. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we'll... Uh... We just get swarmed by murderous birds. <laughs> Imagine. That's how we die. <laughs> so there is... Uh, I think we get the sort of montage of how leading you guys back towards the airship through the spell scar desert here in the in the in the canyons themselves within the the tentacle canyon there is some protection from like the mana storms that blow in sort of off the the desert because within kind of like they physically hit the walls on the outside so it's not completely immune from in here from like all the magical effects but there is some shielding much in the same way that like alpha star walls provide a lot of shielding um, back in the city. It's it's not too far off from that feel. Um, but as you guys are kind of walking, looking up, you see like like the craziness in the sky, the rainbows, the upside down rainbows of like weird colors. Some rainbows are just like pure black and white across the sky. The, the sound of thunder kind of echoing in a completely clear sky somewhere else in the desert. And this montage of you guys kind of making the same way that you made your way here until as you kind of Take your last turn out the canyon and you see off not too far from where you are the second kiss the airship that brought you guys here from nearby alkenstar and it looks like you can see um up on the sort of balloon part uh nelbin gelbin and ne nebby is that right they are uh looks like they're pretty close to getting the uh the ship patched up as you guys make your approach I mean, yeah, they see that everyone sees you coming. You know, there's like the wave as you're coming. You get the eyes of the passengers, the little like halfling passengers, like looking out the window as you come in, um, excited looks on your faces. And I think they lower the sort of like drawbridge to the ship. Uh, Farah, the fair Farah Winslow is there to greet you as she's once again smoking on her famous cigars. That was fast. Time to I wish. skedaddle back to town. Not yet. Cradle's, Cradle's haunted, and I'm pulling out another gun, loading it, and walking back. I really hate to say it, but Refi is kind of right. It's going to be a little longer than we thought. We wanted to let you know, 
and if there was anything on the ship, on the supplies front, we could use it. And I'll turn to Anita, and quietly, in case he's watching, he's probably watching, you should go talk to Gattleby, see if he has anything that he'll let us borrow. All right. Uh, Farrah is a little, like, disappointed that, you know, it's not time to, to go. Um, especially when you guys say that it takes longer, but she, well, you're the one paying the bills. And she uh, just kind of goes back to the cockpit, crosses her feet, kicks him up, and just sits back, staring right out the front window towards the uh, the horizon. And yeah, you guys have free reign of the ship. I think uh, there's like a tug on Refugio. Refugio comes by saying it's haunted. There's like a tug on the like uh, duster. And it's like, it's like the halfling woman. And she's like, did, did you say ha haunted? I'm just loading my pistol again. Moon's haunt or moon's haunted. No, cr cradle is haunted. And I head to the bar and pour myself a shot. Gat will be sitting there at the bar, just quiet drinking. I step off a Wybert because Wybert can't fit in his ship. He can, it's just really tough for him. Like he, every time he moves, he's like bumping over like chairs and hitting people. And then I head to the bar uh, and sit next to Gatlby. Time to go home? No, not yet. I'm just going to be blunt with you, Professor. Do you have any explosives or potions with you that we could maybe use while we look into the courts? It's really hard down there. I mean... You think I brought my my fucking lab equipment or any of my my stuff? This is this is a vacation. You promised me a vacation. I didn't talk to you. The big guy promised me a vacation. Well, I'm not the big guy. I am your student, and I feel that to a certain degree, maybe we owe each other something. Not entirely wrong, I guess. Can you at least explain the situation? Like, what what is it you need from me? All right, so there's this timey-wimey hound that's over there killing us. Like, we don't even have to do anything to it because we can't. So far, it it damages us or it hurts us when it sees us. So we're thinking of making some smoke sticks. However, during our encounter with it, we've also finished up all our elixirs. To keep our, you know, like, to keep ourselves alive. So, if you don't have anything, maybe you could help me either make more smoke sticks or make more elixirs. Like, I could. Ooh, one of the things that also damaged it was like a, a frost vial that I had. So, any anything elemental that you could come up with by the end of to by tomorrow morning wouldn't help us a lot. Your genius. I know it usually takes four days, but maybe you'd have some miracles under that sleeve of yours. Do me a favor. Make a diplomacy check. E. Pour Annie a drink as she's talking. Take a plus one item bonus for drinking with uh, Gattleby. Yeah, that's par for the course for Alkenstar. <laughs> what should be like the new. Mayor Chrysler. No. Broke, don't fix it. Shit, it's broke. I would like to use a hero point. All right, we're hero pointing the social situations. Yes. Not Mary Chrysler. Mary. Happy Pride. You're supposed to say Gattleby. No. Mary Gattleby, that. <laughs> 17. Okay. He kind of, he, he looks at you. Oh, RK Richard RPG gives a need a hero point. We're putting us that hero point. Good. He finishes drinking, nods. You're a good kid. I, I don't think I have much I can do for you, but uh, I'll, I'll see what I can whip together. He places his like empty glass down, nods at Ruficule, and goes up to his room to begin tinkering to see what he can throw together. What kind of sort of, I guess that sort of alchemist thing of like just throwing something together with what you got, you know? We'll see, he'll see what he can come up with. I will make a Thank you, Professor! Oh, Ruffy. What did we get ourselves into? At least we're out of the city, right? I know I've always wanted to get out of the city, but not this way. Maeve's not uh, even here. 
The air seems a bit too clean, you know? Doesn't feel right, doesn't feel heavy in the lungs. <laughs> That's true, it could be the storms. I feel I'm getting a little bit of as asthma, surprisingly. Like, I feel it now that the air's cleaner than when we are <laughs> inside the city. Like, it's like my body doesn't want to breathe as well, because it's like, ah, you're fine, you got good enough air. But seriously though, Ruffy, do you think we could do this? I could only do so many elixirs and so many smoke sticks, and I'm not sure I've convinced Gattleby enough to really give us something. That'll be or not. I think you can do anything, Annie. I have the utmost confidence in you. That's the thing, like, if any of you don't make it out of there, like, I would feel 100% responsible for it. Our little band of misfits have gone quite close. Much to my surprise. With some other members, but, uh... We have each other's backs, and we look out for each other, and we try to get each other out alive, but we're all going to die one day, whether it's here, whether it's falling out of a tower, whether it's dying of old age. Or by fire. Or by fire. We just got to do the best we can while we can. That's true. I'm just trying to prolong everyone's life as much as I could because we haven't really been we've been so busy that we haven't really lived life and I don't think I don't know I feel the opposite the past year and a half or so I've been with Kojak feels like I've been more alive than I have been in the previous combined years of my life I mean me too but I think at some point in everyone's lives, especially with, with you three, like, I see you all very deserving of, you know, like, maybe a, a peaceful, content life. And this is too much, I think. Before you say anything about yourself, stop it. Because you do. I know better when to argue with you like that. And I pour another drink. Cheers. I'll all right. Anita makes a face because she doesn't drink. What? How do you like this stuff? Oh. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set up and make the make everything that we need. I saw Saruk and Halbrant bar the entrance before I went here. Then Anita leaves. I take out my gun cleaning kit. Take a bottle of booze. Utmost safety measures all the time. <laughs> Bottle of booze, firearm, cleaning. We expect nothing less. So yeah, so let's catch up with maybe uh, what Saruk and Halbrunt are doing while this sort of interaction is going on. What are, you, what are you guys doing to prepare for the next day? I think I want to talk first to... I'm so bad at names, but... The the ex shield marshal who came out here to go big game hunting, and then Celesta. That, Celesta, yes. And then, okay. So yeah, I want to go grab her. Yeah. So uh, Celesta is uh, pretty easy to find. Um, I think she's probably enjoying like a midday nap in the in her room. But when she hears sort of the talks that you guys are back, she comes probably looking for you guys as well. You know, eyes wide reading like your body language and your wounds in your face she's like something's not right what's what's wrong i need a favor you feel like stretching your legs a bit not really what if i said please or better yet what if i said it might be very helpful to you know all of those things that you had a problem with in your line of work before you retired what if I said it would be helpful at getting rid of them? I'm listening. What, what are we talking? So we might be in the cradle for a while. I'm concerned that the bumblebees, Saruk air quotes, 
might also be coming this direction. And if they do, they're going to be coming from the mouth of this canyon. So it would be incredibly helpful if we had someone with your skill set somewhere they couldn't see watching out. And if you saw anyone else from Alkenstar making their way down here to, well, run as fast as you can to the cradle and then fire a warning shot. So we have some kind of advance notice. Hopefully we are out in time before that happens, but I would much rather measure, tw no, measure twice, cut once, you know? I thought you were going to ask me to put my neck on the line or something crazy like that, but... I mean, maybe yeah. you are. That sounds reasonable. Are you expecting company? Maybe I'm paranoid, but I would like to... I would like all our bases covered, you know? If they show up, then we know, and if they don't, then I'm a paranoid old man. Both are fine. Celessa nods and says, tell you what, kid. Uh, she pulls, she has like tucked under her armor. She's got like this thing she pulls out. It's on a chain. It, it's a whistle she has. It's like a signal whistle. And she, she nods and she says, just in case the shot's not loud enough, listen for this. And she blows on the whistle and it's so loud that like everyone in the immediate vicinity has to like cover their ears in, in pain, you know? Everyone on the ship up to half a mile away can like hear this whistle like carrying on the wind and even with like the wind in the desert even further off into the wind. And she stops. I'll come running. Two whistles means danger's on its way. So see, the problem with that is the our foes are going to hear that too. Hopefully they don't. Well, I will do it as I'm running towards the temple, like you asked. All right, I trust you then. I mean, if we go higher in elevation, we'll probably have further line of sight on anyone coming but i tell you it's it's uh it's been pretty quiet out here i promise keep my eyes peeled anything comes this way i'll try to give you some advance notice i appreciate you hey you don't happen to have a wayfinder do you no reason why actually and then taps the iron stone which is floating around saruk's head Unfortunately, she is not a Pathfinder Society member. Is that is that the the thing that Pathfinder Society members get? Yes, they get them as a like badge of office, but also they're so like they're uncommon mechanically. But I feel like a lot of them end up in flea markets and such, right? It is not something that she currently has access to now. All right, I'm gonna go find the merchants. Appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, she has now kind of put herself on active scout duty. So she will have eyes and ears to make sure that if something's coming, then uh, you can get hopefully some advance notice. Yeah, the merchants are in the... This, they're not too far to find. They're right in the um, the sort of flight deck, right where like the, the dining tables are. And they seem to be just sitting in... Uh, they've taken a deck of cards from like the game room and brought it down, and they're just playing like... A, what seems to be some variation of poker. Just like a knock knock on the door frame. You all wouldn't happen to have a wayfinder on you, would you? I, I don't expect you to have the whole shop on you on your vacation, but anything at all for sale? Oh, we have plenty of fabrics like silks and and things of that nature. Uh, a wayfinder. Is that like an adventuring thing? Yeah, it's a compass. They Never mind. Maybe it was foolish for me to ask. Uh, they both look, they kind of shrug. They look at each other like they have no idea what you're even talking about. Yeah, measure twice, cut once. All right, I'm going to go see if Farah has one. She has a sort of um, Wayfinder-like device, which is mounted into the like flight deck of the second kiss. There's all kinds of instruments and things. And there is something there which functions like a Wayfinder. So then just run, 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 knock on the door to the the bridge. Captain, you mind if I borrow that adjacent to Wayfinder? It might mean we get out a little faster. She looks at you like you're crazy. Like, you, you want me 
to tear my ship apart and send it with you. I, I mean, I can probably fumbles for tools. I think I could get it out. <laughs> that wasn't the exact problem I had with the situation. Make a diplomacy check for me, if you will. Oh, I will. After I check all of my class features, because I'm so sure I have something that... Interrogation investigators are a whole thing. This is definitely a make a request of um, Farah. <laughs> I'm not using no cause for alarm, but it's funny. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. No cause for alarm. I'm not going to fucking die. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Probably don't have the time to turn her into a thing. Yeah, because that takes 10 minutes. So... <laughs> This feels hero point worthy. It was such a good roll for like a second. It was a 19 and it tipped over to that three. Right. Eh, slightly better. 19. She kind of, you can see like, like she has some, some cause for alarm. Even though you've got the no cause for alarm feet. She agrees, but she wants, first she wants to know like, are you planning on taking it with you like into the cradle? So I'm planning on, and then grabs the iron stone out of the air. If I put this in a Wayfinder, it's Resonant Ability, Tap Tap Shield. We're not going to have a lot of time in there, and if this breaks, we might follow. I would prefer that not to happen. So, yes, I... So, like, is this thing... How big is this adjacent to Wayfinder? Uh, I mean, how big is a Wayfinder? Is Like a compass, like a... Yeah, like a compass-sized thing. It's, like, slightly larger, so it's a little bulkier of a compass, like, um... I would say not too bad. It's just one instrument of many in this flight deck, right? So it's not like you're taking the whole flight deck with you. Fair. It's, it's enough that I think it'll function for what you need it to do. In, in this case, she's willing to, to let you borrow it, but she's going to ask for something valuable as collateral. Yeah, okay. So will you take a crude map of Alkenstar sewers? How about a beat up lion plushie that meant fuck all? Uh, red herring, lion plushie. Fucking that goddamn lion plushie. I think she's hoping for something with some value to it, like financial value to it. I don't know what you guys have on you. Very little. Well, mm, actually, no, JK, I will uh, pop the snap leaf off of my armor. If I don't come back, this isn't useful for me, and it's infinitely useful for you. I think it's. Don't mind me, I'm checking my character sheet. <laughs> it's not worth as much as a Wayfinder is, but if one of your crew is dead otherwise, I think it's worth infinitely more. What do you think? I think you're on good enough terms with her that she's she's fine with that uh, that collateral. So she takes the... Uh, she goes out and takes the snap leaf and it'll, like nods, and you can go ahead and get your tools out and pry the, the Wayfinder from her uh, console. And I shall put the clear quartz octagon in it and then after the rest i'll invest it so that means i can cast uh, i always think that'll print but it'll let me cast a first level mending as a divine in eight once per day and with that saruk has everything i think we're he can figure how to get so if we're sounds like we're resting here so just gonna find a place where you can sit and pray Right. Does sound like we're resting here. How is there anything Hal would like to do? I think Hal would go to Anita and ask her about the book and ask her is there any mention of this Tom dog in your book? Or, I mean, does this and does that, I don't know, contraption y'all picked up from Kosawana's office like look like it matches anything in the temple? You know, that uh, big ass thing you guys and with all the little, I don't know what that stuff is. Quartz? That's it. Does that have anything to do with Kosawana? Does mention the time dog? Did you even try to tell the time dog to sit or, you know, I mean, my head's thinking maybe it's like a protector of the, the Lady Bry. You, since you're, well, they said you were touched by Lady Bry, maybe you could, you know, teach it a thing or two. Like, don't look at us. I don't know. No, I was thinking of that earlier too. But oh, yes, oh, hang on. Let me see. And then I pull out the Logica design and see if there's any mention of, of the time hound, the time dog. 
Okay, yeah, you can spend some time researching it. You can give me... I have academia lore. <laughs> I think academia lore is actually good here because what you're really trying to do is to, like, use this book, even though it's a religious holy tech, you're looking at it in, like, a study fashion, right? You are you know how to, like, look through books, find the information you're looking for in academia. So, so go ahead and do an academia lore and take a plus two item bonus for using the logic of design and give me a recall knowledge Ooh. check. Okay, secret, private. How's up? Oh, I didn't look at it. I click private. <laughs> I'm not looking if at it un you, until you. You and I can see it. Nobody else can see it. Well, I guess the stream can see it. So anyway, I'm still not it. looking. You spend some time looking through uh, the logic of design, and the interesting thing with the logic of design is it's designed and laid out in a very logical fashion. Surprise, surprise! The logic of design. There's like th there's like three numbers for every single decree or every single. Um, regulation right it's like 2.2.3 .2 or whatever and each section and subsection and has like a heading and a subject matter so after um maybe like an hour or so of perusing it you do find a section which comes up with some relevant information to you here and i will go ahead and show this I'll go ahead and do it to all players so they can all see it there is a page and a passage in here regulation 6.2.1 but anyways you find a section which is section 6 which is listed as restrictions and avoidances and underneath that you find a subsection 6.2 which is listed as time and then you find regulation 6.2.1. And regulation 6.2.1 states, time is an important concept, but must be treated carefully. It is our duty to design, maintain, and improve ways to accurately measure the passage of time, but only its measurement. Tampering with the flow of time or attempting to move oneself through time risk drawing the unwanted attention of the dimension of time itself. These guardians, known as Hounds of Tindalos, appear as dog-like creatures in shape. They are characterized by a few key abilities. 1. Their gaze can manifest physical wounds without blood. 2. Sharp teeth and claws. That's pretty self-evident. 3. Flight. Four, usage of acute angles to teleport through our reality. And five, use of acute angles to help distort reality and defend itself from harm. As such, experiments around time should be, restrict be restricted purely to its measurements. A section on time regulation and mention of these hounds of Tindalos which seems to back up what Saruk came up with before, but there's a little bit more solid, concrete information on you to act on here in the logic of this. Robert, look at this, and then Anita shows the re regulation 6.2.1. It's pretty much what Saruk told us earlier, but look at numbers four and five, something about acute angles. I wonder if it's using the, like, that place was all laid out symmetrically and in in perfect you know harmony and had all these little jewels and everything on the wall i wonder if we I wonder if we can lure it outside if we can like take it away from these acute angles it'll be susceptible to harm or i mean even better we just i mean lock it outside well it went through the wall that won't work but i'm, I'm wondering if we can get it outside we can you know harm it get it out into the field or whatever out in the desert a little bit more because there's none that cute angles out there. It's just dirt and more dirt. But how 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 would we get it outside with the acute angles? Like it still needs the walls. That's what I'm thinking. That it needs the walls to go through. Yeah, but if we get it away from the walls, maybe we drag it out of the walls. I don't know. I'm just thinking, thinking, you know. Or maybe there's a place in there that's you know that doesn't have it. I wonder if it like knows where we are because of the vibrations on the ground. 
or is it like an omnipresent thing since it's from another dimension and just knows where we are? That's what I'm wondering. Because I, I feel that, I think that trying to get it out still is risking us from being possibly harmed by it. That by the time we do get it out, we're already so injured that if we try to fight it, you know, it still might win. Not sure. I mean, if I grab it and close my eyes after and just drag that shit out. I don't know. What about your little uh, contraption that you had? I mean, if I recall correctly, it looked like the same layout of the foyer. Foyer. Well, call it foyer from where I'm from. Which one? You know the one from his... Oh, hang on. That little thing. Yeah, I think I remember what you're talking about. And Hang on. And then she goes to Wybert and opens his trunk. Yeah, I've been racking my brain on figuring what this one is. Could I do another attempt on this clockwork quartz invention? Figure out what it is. Okay. So this uh, this is the thing you have in Wybert's butt, right? <laughs> uh, blind. This is this was the unusual powder. Is that is that what you're doing? Can I do two? Because <laughs> one is like there's one that says. Clockwork Quartz Invention. Oh, I see, yeah. Found in Kosawana's workshop. Has a 13th hour. And then right. one is... Yeah. Okay. So we can do one... We can do run roll per which one. So the first check you were interested... Which was, the, which was the first one you wanted to do? Which was... It was the Clockwork Quartz Invention. Clockwork Quartz. Okay. So... This device that you found in Kozona's workshop functions and looks to function like a clock, but it it seems to take its powering. Unlike most clockwork devices, there's no clockwork, no wind up, nothing on this device that has anything to do with a winding mechanism, right? The only thing that seems to power it as a power source is the quartz crystal itself that's kind of nestled in at its center. The quartz itself looks unextraordinary. It looks as generic as any other piece of quartz that you've ever seen. So if there's something magical or enchanted about the quartz, it doesn't, there's nothing to your apparent study that shows it that way. It's just somehow coastal one has managed to harness the power of a quartz to power a clock, which is impressive in and of itself. Uh, you're still coming back to that 13th, hour on it it's got 13 numbers on his face which is odd and the, it doesn't do you any good for tracking time because you know it gets one hour out of sync every day with the extra hour that's on there or two hours out of sync even it, it goes back to this idea and this thing that you read about in the asynchronous archives in your big study binge kosawana was obsessed with someone that referred to themselves as the 13th ordinal which was a prophet that had been stricken from the logica design. And that prophet is the one who was sort of talking about the cradle of quartz in the first place. And you kind of look at this clock and this 13th ordinal clock. It probably is a more than anything. It's probably like a, not necessarily a cult, but like a secret member meeting. It's something you would have in your office to denote yourself as a member of this sort of secret group. And if somebody saw it, they would know that you were a secret member without having to say anything. You get the impression that's probably what this clockwork invention is. Mm -hmm. There's some amazing tech at work here to make it function as a clock without a wind-up device. And yet, at the same time, it's clearly meant as a sort of secret society showpiece. Okay. And then I'll do the other one for the... Hang on, let me make sure what it was. The powder. Okay. Yeah, you can make a roll for that too. Boom. As you start looking at this pow powder, you start to uncover some of its mysteries and learn as to uh, what it is. It is actually a sort of item which is known as timeless salts, which is a consumable alchemical item with a charge. You can sprinkle it onto a single object up to 10 cubic feet in volume, 
with no more than 40 bulk, and it'll keep it preserved for an entire week. It won't decay. Things that um, require the object to be fresh don't pass time, like corpses and stuff. You can keep corpses fresh or food fresh or anything like that. So it, it's a way to sort of preserve things, an alchemical way to sort of manipulate the time flow of an object. Gotcha. Uh, so as she's looking at the invention, Anita uh, looks up to Hal and says, Sorry, Halbert, I don't think this has anything to do with the Time Hound. If anything, it's just like an homage to his old belief in the conspiracy that this 13th hour, the, the Ordinal, the Prophet or something, is real. Well, the salt will help you make some fabulous lizard tail jerky, though. As a Nobo USA in chat is alluding to. Are we going to uh, go back tonight? Because I do my best, my best work just after dark. Um, I, I, I have to stay because I still have to finish all these smoke sticks and the elixirs. But Rafi or Saruk might be free. If you do see either of them, could you also mention about numbers four and five of the regulation? Yeah, I think I'm gonna let them know right now. All right, thank you, Albert. In a combat sense, too, Hal, and maybe like Ruffy and Saruk, as you guys kind of talk about it. You, you realize in the entire time that you were harassed by that hound, it never once left being adjacent to a wall. I'd mention that to uh, go to Saruk. Hey, look what Nina, uh, <clears throat> look what Anita <laughs> found. Begins flipping through book. Right here. Usage of acute angles to teleport through our reality. Use of acute angles to help distort reality and defend itself from but you remember when we were in there, uh, when when T. Jock was in there taking a look, it was next to that wall, and, and then it came through the wall, but it didn't move away from the wall. Yeah, that whole place is sharp angles on sharp angles on sharp angles. My chakra. So we can either get it out or won't get out, or I mean, we can't really break down the walls, but. So does does Saruk know whether or not Hounds of Tindalos are like intelligent? Given that recall knowledge check you did earlier, let me just double check their stat block before I say something. They are extremely intelligent, intelligent creatures, although, you know, the extent of their intelligence is not something that's been conventionally studied because most people don't spend enough time around them to, to survive, right? You can't just have a conversation with one. They are otherworldly enough that their mind is so alien and foreign to, like, our understanding that it makes it hard to communicate with them but they show extreme intelligence extreme puzzle solving skills and an intellect and reasoning that is off the charts absolutely they're intelligent but not one for conversation right if they're here and they're being given a task then they are committed to doing that task hounds of tindalos are remarkably intelligent creatures i there is a part of me that would love to set up, I don't I don't know how, but some locked box such that it would go in, but then not come out again. But I don't think we're going to get that lucky. Unless there happens to be like a safety room in there somewhere. I don't know. I mean, there was that pristine sarcophagus sitting in the middle of that room. I mean, is that a locked box? That is an incredibly valid idea. Yeah, maybe. Jam it in, jam the lid. I I would say I have enough blood in me to do that, but the thing doesn't make you bleed. I mean, we still should take a look around and maybe we I mean I mean maybe Kosawana's just sitting in there reading a book. We can just holler him holler his name and say, Hey, we're here to save you. Like people are after you. Those same people that uh were after you shot us up in that temple. Maybe we can have a conversation if you can, you know, tie your dog up a little bit. Yeah, maybe. So then real real quickly, uh, we saw art of of Kosawana, like we, the four of us at the table. Did the characters see the art? There would have been at least a sort of charcoal sketch drawing that you've seen of what he looks like. So you're at least aware, generally speaking, of what Kosawana should look like. Gotcha. Well, there's nothing to it but to do it, I suppose. Yeah. So we going back tonight or... I think we ought to. 
you need to be back there tonight so you can scout the thing. Just take a look around. If we leave Ruffy here, he'll be... Well, it's getting to coffee time. Yeah, maybe we should. Let's just wait a little bit till after dark. He'll be wound for sound and we'll be good to go. Yeah, sounds good. I'll go with you. I'm... I shouldn't get close to the place. I Saruk shifts slightly and his full plate clings. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. But I can find something to climb up on and provide cover topside at least. Don't get, don't get too close to them birds. Yeah. I'll just yell at him real good. Worked with Refi. Refi ran away from you? No, Ref. He shot at the birds and the birds flew off. Oh. And I'll shoot at the birds, and presumably the birds will fly off, or I'll shoot the birds, I guess. That would be a good trick, though. All right, let's go show him this. Maybe he's got some ideas. Uh, or you can stay here, and I'll take the book and go over there and take it. Oh, no, I want to see what comes out of his ass when he tries to... Oh, well... Oh, wait, that, that's Tommy doing the voice. What is... Have you ever heard the fr- I can't put those two voices together. <laughs> when he sees it and comes up with some harebrained strategy for petting a dog, which is, you know, this is going to be too good to miss. I'm right behind you. All right. I'll take the book over to Reficule and assume he's still sitting at the bar with his booze, like at one of the tables away from Gattleby, at least. And I'll plop it down and point my finger and then look at him and I'll turn it back around and start reading it to him. I've got a napkin. I fold it over my eyes. Yes, drinking. that is a good idea. Just look at the napkin. Don't think about the consequences. You're so smart. All right. So I need to found this in her book. It says she found uh, this this hound Tindalos in her book, and it talked about the things we know about, right? Guys produce or gays producing wounds, sharp teeth. We didn't see it fly yet, but it went through the wall but it says it uses acute angles to teleport through our reality, it uses acute angles to distort reality and defend, defend itself from harm. And if you remember, it didn't get away from them walls. It uh, hung out close to the walls. So maybe we can get away from the walls. Sirk said uh, Kijok saw sarcophagus in there. Maybe we can drag it in there. Do you have any ideas like how we can best utilize this new information? It does gel with what you saw of Reficule, too, because when you had shot it square in the face, you remember oddly, it didn't make sense to your brain at the time, but I, I even mentioned how, like, it looked like the wall next to it, like, exploded with, like, the ricochet. It was a really high-tech moment, but seeing this laid out and playing that back in your head, it does look like there might be some merit to this. I'm not as book-learned as all of you, but, uh, I mean, it seems to make <clears throat> sense to me, you know. I shot it at its face, and it did see seem to be its good sides. It did look pretty cute. Uh, wanted to pet it, so it taking advantage of all those cute angles makes sense. It's not where I thought you would go with that, but I'm not surprised. I think we're heading out tonight to so we can get in under the cover of dark and it's like set up uh, some safe place, and I can take a little bit of a look around uh, around those cute walls. And I quickly assemble my dueling pistol. I'm just about to switch over to coffee. Anyway, it seems like a good time. You know, I'd say you're like clockwork, but based on where we're going, I don't really want to think about clocks that much. You're like a sundial. Yeah. I think, um, but right before you guys leave to go back and, you know, enough time passes that I don't think Anita's had much time to prepare everything yet. I'll have to wait till morning or whatever when you guys are long resting because you're going to go back in the camp outside the 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 cradle for like the eight hours is that the plan i think so it depends right if i uh, if we scout around and find something that gives us any more information we might have time to come back but if not then we'll probably just hang out there um before you go i think gattleby will pull anita aside and sort of be like well bolts uh, it ain't much, kid, but uh, it's the best I could do on sh such short notice. And he kind of dumps a couple of, like, alchemical vials in your hand, and I'll go ahead and add them to your inventory. But he hands you over a moderate thunderstone, a moderate frost vial, and a moderate bottled lightning that he's able to cobble together with the various things he had lying around. Professor, this is... This is amazing. 
I was honestly expecting you to only give me one, but... Well, thank you so much. Don't get yourself blown up, kid. Thank you. Oh, and, um... I know you were asking me to look for salt, so... And then I give him the... The salt that I just figured out. The timeless salts? Mm-hmm. Not to sound ungrateful or nothing, but this this doesn't do shit for me in Pyronite, but that's that's okay. Maybe your lady could appreciate it. Does she cook? A lady. Oh, you want me to get back? Oh no no no! That ship, that ship sailed a long time ago. Oh, all you right. Think, you think you you saw the way she? Wait, you think there's still a chance? You, I mean, she slapped me. Like we, you saw that, right? I was slapped too, but I think I have a chance. So, she said nothing really, but I think she'll wait for me. I'm hoping. I don't know. Who knows? Love is, I don't know anything about love. Stay toxic, my friends. <laughs> I mean, all I remember is she took my wedding ring and threw it in her fridge and left it there for years. But she didn't throw it away. Right? Maybe she just wants to be wooed again by you. Because, I mean, if you if you go to someone expecting them to just take you back and you don't really work for it, why would they? I've been so caught up in my work and trying so hard to make sure I got it right that, uh, you know, I sort of neglected what was really important right you know we were out here Anita and I uh, I think I cracked the case I figured out why my formula was too powerful what was it I was using the wrong units in one of my equations nothing wrong with what I I underestimated its power by about a hundred hundredfold so, uh, mystery solved, I guess. I, my life's work's complete, I guess. It's a weird feeling. I understand that. But also, I remember Kojak telling me that when when you've completed something, it only re leaves room for you to do something else. And if you really want to get back with your lady, then maybe now's the time since you have a lot of it already. Be honest, do you think I'll make a good father? A father? She's pregnant? Oh, she wants to be. Well, you, you can't be too harsh on people who look up to you. I'm out. And he walks away. <laughs> I put my lab in Wyber's <laughs> trunk again well, before heading out so that I could continue doing my smoke sticks. He, uh, he does at least have given you a little bit to help you on your way. It's not much, but it's a little something from him. All right, and we'll head back towards the cradle um, to do some scouting. But we're, first, we're going to go to our break for the night because it is that halfway point, 8.30 Pacific time. So we're going to go to break. While we're at break, take some time to support us here at Recall Knowledge. Head on over here if you're watching on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Recall Knowledge. Give us a follow. Give us a subscription, Amazon Prime, yada yada. You know the drill. If you got one, we'll take it. Uh, also, head on over, if you haven't yet, head over to youtube.com slash recall knowledge. You can check out our YouTube channel, get caught up on all the previous episodes. We got the entirety of Punks and a Powder Keg up there. We've got the previous nine episodes of Cradle, of course. At least previous eight are up there. Nine will be going up this week because we release episodes on YouTube Fridays. And... Check out Recon Knowledge on Patreon. That's where you get access to unreleased content that's only ever streamed live. Um, as well as uh, if you're new to Pathfinder, if you're new to uh, Foundry, we have a whole bunch of videos that'll help you get caught up on how to play those things. Because we learned along with our audience, which was a lot of fun. So we're going to be back in about 10 minutes with some more punks. Or sorry, not punks. Outlaws of Alconstar, Cradle of Quartz. Don't go anywhere, and maybe we'll see if Rethy gets to pet the time doggy. See, three hero points. One hero point to attempt it, three if you succeed. That's Must uh, pet the peril pup. The peril no. sentient creature that is here to kill you. That's right, all right. It's got see all those guys. cute angles. <sighs> oh, God. <Sheesh. laughs>
but welcome <laughs> welcome back to cradle of courts where our outlaws come up with a plan to pet the time doggy so we have oh look at that gifted sub from hallowed rpg to no boo no usa who's joining us i think for the first time tonight you guys are awesome our camera fades in over the the darkened night so on stream i'm putting it up for those of you who are who are watching though have not had the luxury of seeing this handout yet this is visually what the cradle of course looks like i know you players can't see it i'll pop it up so you can see it but um for mm. i'm putting it on stream uh, other than the fact it's nighttime here nestled against the cliffs of the spell of the tentacle canyon this magnificent quartz facade this giant shrine built to uh to bry herself or themselves it's this amazing sight and even in the moonlight it just catches and reflects and looks very beautiful you know, the unfortunate thing is, as it's built like this into the front of a, of a straight cliff face, at a quick glance, it doesn't appear like there's much of a side entrance or a back entrance or anything. It looks kind of like a huge structure built into the mouth of a cave. But how you're interested in scouting it out and seeing if perhaps you can find anything more, if you would like to do so, feel free to go ahead and give a perception check. And if you would be so kind as to pair that with what I assume is a stealth check. Yep. Because you are trying not to draw attention to yourself. That is correct. So in the dark, I can sneak. I don't become observed. You move up to five feet faster with the sneak action. You don't become observed. Even in the, you don't need cover. You can just like out in the open. You're good. Yep. As long as you're in dip lines or darkness, you... Yeah, as long as it's in dim light or darkness, or if you have cover. Okay, perfect. Somebody was standing guard at the front of the cradle courts looking out at this big opening. Almost everyone else wouldn't even be able to attempt to sneak up on it because there's no cover, right? But with Hal, using the slink feature, the darkness and the dim light just gives you the cover you need to even sneak through wide open spaces, which is really cool visually. Hal out here shadow dancing. Meanwhile, Suruk is going to some canyon somewhere like clamber up to where there's sight lines and just deploy the backpack ballista in, in case of bad shit happening. Perfect. So we'll take the perception check and the stealth check. I'll do the stealth first since I'm hovering over it. We're avoiding notice as we are. We're kind of doing the thing where we're doing multiple exploration activities at once, but in the given the context of the situation, Sounds good. Well, that's nice a 32 hero. on the stealth. I think that's nice. pretty good. Pretty much every single one of your companions probably lose you in the darkness and lose sight of you. Even Saru is like watching for you. Like you just, he just disappears into the freaking darkness, man. 32. Do you want to do a secret perception check since I'm actively looking for an opening or is it? You can make it secret. That's fine. E either way, if you want to make it public, either way, I'm fine with it. Make it public <laughs> then. Make it public. It can be public. But I guess, well, I don't know. No, no, no. Make it public. It's fine. Gotcha. We can all see you roll that second 19. That's not what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a total, a total of 18 on your perception check. Given the 18, if you, unless you want to spend a hero point, I will tell you the results of your 18. Okay, I will spend a hero point. All right. I watch Twitch is giving a hero point to Hal and chat. Hero point comes That's in, bumps up to a 25. Woo! You spend some time like searching sort of the surrounding canyon walls, but looking for any sort of secret passages from the outside in. Other than the sort of main entrance, which is sort of has all the the winged beasts that you guys have sort of scared up into the perches. They, since you come back, right, they've sort of nestled down and retaken their position. But at night, it feels like they're just all like kind of roosting up in the the crystals and like sleeping for the night and you you move through so silent that not one of them even like is aware of your presence as you sneak right underneath them uh there are the small windows that you had mentioned before um each of the windows is small enough that it's only enough to let in like fresh air and a little bit of light it's only a few inches wide which makes it too skinny to actually crawl in or out 
you kind of take a moment and take a peek in each one. There's no signs of movement or sounds anywhere at each one of the windows you check. And you kind of come away short of some secret passage like high above up in the cliffs that would require you to climb up and like search around. You feel pretty confident that there's only one way in or out of this place. Okay. I'll take that back to the group and kind of howl to force Rook to come down from his little perch. And uh, then once we all grew back together, you know, doesn't look like there's a way in. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything unless we want to climb up there, but I'm not really sure. I pointed at the robot and Anita working on stuff. I'm not really sure they can get up there. Doesn't look like a back door or anything, unfortunately. Or fortunately, it's information. How we frame it for ourselves, I think, is important. I can't think of anything else we need to do. Yeah, take some time. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I can sneak in there and it can't see me or something. I mean, if he, if you want to give that a shot, I won't stop you, but I would caution heavily against it, I think. The biggest thing to remember is that the whole temple, at least the main entryway, is covered in like bright light thanks to those lanterns that illuminate the place. So there's not a lot of dim light. Like the hallways that you've peered down did look like they were dim, but like the, the main entryway was definitely lit bright. I mean, there's other there's other passages. I didn't see nothing uh, when that uh, dog come running. I ran around and hid behind the curtain. I mean, I dodged its gaze. Maybe we can go down one of them. You know, I mean, it got it noticed Kijok when you sent him down in there. Maybe we kind of maybe that is our back door. Maybe we take that other way. Yeah, maybe. I think as long as we all stay close to each other, Sir pulls the smoke stick. Everybody's carrying one of these and we're just ready to pop it to give ourselves cover. It's not a great plan, but it's a plan. Yeah, I'd be in favor of kind of searching that uh, side room that uh, hallway I went down just to I mean, hell. <laughs> you went all the way to the Cradle of Courts, this mythic place in the middle of the Spellscar Desert that ain't nobody ever been to except for us four in Kosawana, and we didn't take a look around, we should do that. Do you think it was it would give us a better chance to, like, maybe kill the lights? I'm concerned about your ability to see if we do so. I have my thing now, Thank, thanks to, you know, like, Bri, Lady Bry. Oh, you can see in the... Well, we can try it. You notice there's, like, a... One of Anita's eyes has been completely replaced with almost like a robotic clockwork sort of like device that's like socketed in the eye, I believe. It's sparking dangerously. You should look at that. Look at. Uh, I should oil it in a bit. I make the broad strokes presumption that the Hounds of Shindelos can see in the dark as well or better than we can. I hear you. I mean, we could try it. We go down in that right-hand hallway. Yeah, have the smoke stick ready. If uh, it comes for us, we can just hit it and head back out and see if it does anything to any one of us. Or we can head back further in, but... I think if it wanted us dead, it had us dead to rights last time we saw it, and it didn't finish us off. Yeah, that's right. It went back through the wall. Yeah. I don't know. One of my concerns as well is that uh, the, smoke, the smoke sticks that I'll be able to provide is very limited. And I don't know how far we could go into, you know, like the cradle with just four, maybe five smoke sticks. Plus one pulls the one he took from mm -hmm. Wyrus Chunk. Well, hopefully we don't encounter that. Nods are Effie. Hopefully you don't encounter it right away, right? If that's what we're kind of banking on. If if we hop in and it's right there, then yeah, we're kind of fucked. But, uh... How many exactly are you planning on making? Well, I'm thinking of doing, like, six elixirs. Gatobi just gave me, like, Thunderstones. 
hang on let me make sure i have it right yeah he just gave me a thunderstone a vial and a bottled lightning i could i do want to prioritize the elixirs so i'm thinking of maybe six unless you guys want me to focus more on the smoke sticks and then i could just do one of each for the elixirs and then the rest of my reagents could just go to the smoke sticks I still have a single lesser elixir and two minor. All right. Hang on. Let me see what I could do. Bloop, bloop. All right. By bringing my elixirs down to Anita's computing, looking at her materials. So by bringing my elixirs down to three, I could do seven smoke sticks. Plus one gives us essentially eight minutes. If we all stay it's together two and each. someone. Two each, yeah. Pops the smoke holds it in the middle of us it's it is the best plan we have with the resources we have available to mm -hmm. us yeah we could do that yeah i agree all right and in case of emergency there's also an elixir with wybert so if you guys are close to him and you're able to open him up you, you could grab it yeah I just don't think we should expediency when we get in. We shouldn't stop and fix up everything as we can. Also, if we get backed into a corner, I know you're not going to like this, Anita, but we can probably come back for Wybert, pull what's left, rebuild him better. Easier to do than rebuilding us, you know? And then Saruk realizes he's immediately put his foot in his mouth. Mm hmm I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That was rude of me. It's all right. To be completely honest, it's kind of went over my head. Don't worry, she's got thicker skin now. That's... God damn it, Revy. All right, I'm passing out. Yeah, with that being said, it seems like we've got all our preparations in place. All that's left to do is to execute the plan. And so you guys feel free to rest for the night, which should help you get back any of your daily resources which in this case i believe it's mostly just anita that benefits from this although saru gets some stuff on daily prep like picking your daily lore and stuff like that yeah i gotta think about my lore. uh so out of character before we uh, at the conclusion of the rest saru will be at 58 out of 81. i can top everyone off too if you if you all are willing to spend like maybe an hour Given as much time as you guys needed, there's not a lot of pressing time. So I would say Anita would be able to bandage everyone up to full during the course of the night and then resting and all that. Like, I'm fine with you guys going back up to full on everyone. It's just not even worth micromanaging the dice on that. It was like, we're not like time limited right now. There's nothing pressing that we need to go like hour by hour. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful GM who's not making a shoelace dice rolls. <laughs> Yeah, there's, I, don't, I don't see a point in, in uh, going through all that effort. So. Or is it because we're secretly stuck in a time loop and he knows it? <laughs> okay, so then second out of character, what do y'all want Saruk to prep for? Uh, I should really say the names of my feats instead of for uh, da, da, that thing I have for, for, for skillful lessons. Or JK, that's not the name of it. I know. My class features. The entire is it is that key fresh collection. Scrolls for flexible studies. That's it. Uh, Brylore seems all right, but if you guys have any other suggestions, I am certainly open. Can we do Timehound lore? Since we have a name. Yeah, I could do. Alrighty. Cthulhu lore it is. I mean, yeah, like outer gods lores. He is the sort of creature that's from that sort of like outer god mythos. The sort of um, oh man, what's that really cool name for the the like sky pantheon thing? The dark tapestry. The dark tapestry. That's it. Thank you, lore master Tommy. If you haven't yet, go watch all Tommy's awesome lore videos on YouTube. He does a lot of awesome. Black Dragon Gaming, you nerds, go do it. Exactly. Okay, how does Tindalos lore it is? That is the most. Lore the plot that I've ever pulled out in my life. Well, you had you had contact with it and and did research on it and come back, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any other last minute prep stuff, guys? 
I'm gonna briefly manifest Keyjack. Stay with the boy today. If we get caught by that thing, I think he might need you more than I do. I appreciate your help. I will be here if you need me. That's not a good accent, but I will be here. And he, uh, he, he's always got a connection with you. You know you can summon him as need be, but currently he is allowing his consciousness to drift back to Alconstar to watch over the boy. Anita, why is Wyvert sparking dangerously? <gasps> You're all right. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Double explode. The molten cowboy does not look at explosions. That's what I did for the night. Uh, I was repairing wiper. <laughs> you exploded twice, oh no. <laughs> I remember. Because I did explode and then he was unstable. I failed my, my stability check. But yeah, he would. It's just like a 10 minute thing to refix him without even a roll. So he's, he's back to being stable. So. With that being said, we arrive back on the doorstep to the cradle, fresh in the next morning. You know, the front door was left open as you guys hightailed it out of here the night before, and it remains open um, as you return. Looking in at the entrance hall, it's this hexagonal, hex, hexagonal, that's a weird word, but yeah, hexagonal chamber in the shape of a crystal with like thousands and thousands of these like gemstones lining the walls, making the face of Bri, Bri like looking down on you. The blue, the sort of like four torches in the sconces give off that like constant blue glow that reflect from all the gemstones, giving this a very like regal feeling entryway. And it kind of betrays the, the corpses of the creatures that you'd killed or unkilled. Can you kill something that's already dead the day before? We unalived them. You don't want to be demonetized. Bits of clockwork creature that exploded outward from the floor, leaving scorch marks in the earth. Welcome back to the Cradle of Quartz. What are you guys doing? What's your plan? Uh, we're patiently waiting for the battle map. Well, just narratively, what's your plan? You want the battle <laughs> map? You want to fight? We can fight. No, no, mm. please. Do not, want... <laughs> Do not pet the pupper. Okay, so Sirk's going to go in. If we are, the four of us are in a, in as much space as Wybert takes up with Wybert in the rear, we immediately turn, I think, in turn past the curtain, which then we have to break into a straight line, which Saruk will go first. I will use the exploration activity that means my shield is up and my other hand has a smokestick in it. All right, so Saruk's defending. Yeah. Scouting. Halbrunt's scouting surprise. The scout is scouting. Ruffy and Anita? I'll be raising my shield. Defending as well. Wybert in the rear. Thanks for the cheer, Nobu. Nobu? I don't know how to pronounce that. Nobu. I have my hand ready at a moment notice to pet. <laughs> Ready to pay. Um, I'm look. I'm looking out for any danger as well. Got nothing else I can do. So yeah, feel free to go ahead and uh, and uh, move your way in. You know, staying in your whatever marching order you're currently doing. Narratively speaking, as you kind of navigate your way down this like long hallway, it's it's not very wide, and given everything you know about this creature. This looks like a terrible place to encounter it because there's no... There, every single space in this temple is an acute angle. Like everywhere the floor meets the wall, everything is completely perfectly designed. The Bry Architects did a really good job of making this a magnificent piece of engineering and yet a perfect playground for one of these things. And there's nowhere to like hide. Yeah, this is all bad. Yes, it is. And you make your way uh, sort of down that hallway, the sort of blue light in the sconce above lighting up this hallway but all is quiet as you make your way through here um, there's no sounds or anything moving and you can continue your exploration it comes to a sort of t intersection which looks like it doubles back towards one of those windows that hal was looking in the night before and continue straight on to a small chamber at the end of the hallway let's take a look you sure i mean why not 
we're all the way out of here. This place is said not to exist. Like, I think there's three, five people that know of this place. You are ludicrously optimistic in the face of death, my friend. But all right. It's for the content. <laughs> so yeah, Wybers is again scraping along these walls as he squeezes <laughs> his way through the, the narrow hallways. Um, this opens into like a small chamber. There's, you know, smash wooden pieces. It doesn't look like there's any uh, living creatures, no bodies in this room. Just one of these, like, another one of these blue ever bright torches giving this constant, like, glow. It's like a weird laboratory feel with, like, that that fluorescent light all the time. This room gives you a good view um, out of one window towards the entrance, which would make it a pretty good sort of lookout post if somebody was here um, on scouting duty. And there's a second window that peers straight out into the Tentacle Canyon itself. Do you want to take a bit and search it further, or are you just interested in just doing a quick peek? Take a cursory glance around. Yeah, just quickly scan the ruins. Yeah, if you guys want to take uh, some time, you know, it takes about 10 minutes of time to search, you know, 10 minute chunks you can search collaboratively this room. Uh, just give me perception checks, secret perception checks as you search around. Can I look at the light and just see, in case we need to, just figure out how I can turn it off? Sure. Yeah, yeah. using Wybert as a ladder to kind of lift you up, because they're they're pretty much set, they're not eye level, they're set a little higher, kind of above your heads, but with mm -hmm. Wybert being big and you being able to ride his back, he kind of lifts you up like a ladder. Once you're up to eye level with it, most of what is magnificent or interesting about this lantern is the shell. It's got like this quartz crystal lid over the top that gives it this awesome blue glow and bays the light in a very concentrated, very specific manner around the room. It's, it looks like it's actually angled so that the sort of angles of the crystals get the light exactly where it needs to be. But other than that, it looks like in run-of-the-mill ever-burning torch inside. So just at the look, it's basically like unscrewing the lid and taking the ever burning torch out would allow you to get access to the ever burning torch. Can I grab the shell? Do I have time for that? Yeah, I mean, we're spending some time in here. So um, in that case, I will go ahead and reveal this loot token. You can go ahead and loot the ever burning torch and we will turn off the light in this room and the light in this room goes dark with only the bits of light filtering in through the windows. And Anita gets herself a ever burning torch the rest of you guys that are searching the room come up without anything interesting it doesn't appear that there's anything in the rubble any sort of secret passages it just looks like a an old room used for lookout you come up unfortunately empty-handed Ruffy wasn't searching he was just keeping an eye out for the peril pup Saruk is just very anxious and would like to keep moving about like seven or so minutes into this sort of interlude of searching and stuff, you hear the sort of like scratching of nails like on the on the floor, just like a very like skitter. Um, it sounds like it echoed back from somewhere near like the main entrance, like that way in the hallway, Ruffy. But you to your eyes as you were looking, you never saw anything. You just heard it. We should probably get moving. Yeah, we're going. All right, where to next? Excuse me, why were you chonky boy? There's a time <laughs> hound. We gotta fucking go. God dang nemesis. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me <laughs> you come down here. <laughs> I'm in space. My bad, sir. <laughs> just we gotta stay right on top of each other. Right now. So I guess just down to the other room at the end of the hall. Perfect. So um as you kind of move in towards this room, you notice that the floor, the ceiling, and all the walls in this alcove are cracked and pocked with pin-sized holes. This is very stark contrast to the rest of the chamber, which has been very well-maintained and very pristine. Tons of pin-sized holes pocked, marked across this entire chamber. And there's a desiccated corpse lying slumped in the southwestern corner of the chamber. And it looks like it's wearing this like ridiculous looking helmet with like its eyesight looks partially obscured. And it almost looks like the helmet is like fit with like gun barrels Eek, like 360 degrees around it, just pointing in all directions. Someone had the right idea. Strix's gonna approach, hoping it doesn't reanimate. I would like to take the helm. Okay, yeah. So you go towards the the corpse and 
like try to slowly like lift the helmet off the corpse. There's a moment where like the helmet, you start lifting it up and then it feels like the body like shunts to life and like grabs at you. But you realize it's just that the helmet got high enough that the head like slumped out of it. And like it like startles you for a second, but it does not come to life. And you can go ahead and loot the desecrated, the desiccated corpse here. I see you flipping things at the last second, Steve. I did. I did not remember to do it before, but I did it now. So does it look like if someone were to put on the helmet, it would protect them or like protection from gaze attacks with this helmet? Yes, no? You, you can, like, you want to try sliding it over your head and, ch and checking it out? I mean, just looking at it, uh, give me a crafting check as you glance at it. I guess I'm making the bold assumption that this person was human. I don't know if that fits Saruk's noggin. <laughs> but crafting, 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 crafting. This might have supposed to have been, oh yes, this is the perfect strategy or the least perfect strategy as the dice warrant. You have no idea what the function of this helmet is looking at it, but you do believe just whoever designed it did not design it with the, the function of visibility in mind. It, you're pretty sure if you were to wear this, it would protect you from all visual <laughs> effects in the area. All right. And Saruk will pass the helmet back. This ought to be helpful. One of you put this on. All right. Got my hat. Ref Gil doesn't got a hat no more. No, oh, that's true. Uh, it, might, it looked like it might. The horns might catch. This looks a bit painful, honestly. I mean, my hat was flexible. I think I may have accidentally put something that I wasn't supposed to. Why is it up there on the lamp? That's not where that goes. Damn it, Saruk. <laughs> uh, who are, we are you trying to put on, Ruffy? Are you interested at all in... Are, so you get the helmet off, do you just skedaddle right away, or are you taking any time to like look at the room or figure out what's going on here? Honestly, Saruk's main MO right now is, oh god, oh god, everyone is in danger. Accomplish the mission, get gone. So unless someone stops him, he's just going to go. If somebody wants to look around, out of character, please stop him. But otherwise, <laughs> running, running, complete the mission. Yeah, you hand you hand the helmet to uh, Ruffy Kill, right? And then you kind of go back curly. You look up at the end of the hallway, and like standing in the doorway is, for like a moment, just staring at you, is the Hound of Tindalos. You're at the far end of the hallway. It's staring at you. Just gonna close my eyes as fast as I can. Checks. I. Uh, uh, we're gonna try. Maybe it speaks Talden. I super doubt it. But just we mean you no harm. Let us pass. We are here to stop the temporal incursion. And then just reach to pop the smoke stick. You actually pop it, or you just reach to get ready for it. Reach to get ready. See if it responds. There's no response from it. Did every, okay, is everyone closing their eyes or is it just Saruk? I'm trying to put on this damn helmet. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I'm near the back. I'm just like, what the fuck is this thing? If Saruk hears it moving or like if there's a if there's a long pause, Saruk's probably going to pop his smoke stick. I'm closing my eyes and holding on to Halbrin's shoulder. Got it. And what's Halbrin doing? Pulling his hat down. Yeah. For, for the ease of figuring out like what this item that you have doesn't do or not, I've gone ahead and identified the helmet in your inventory for Refugio. It's called a Thunder Helm. You can wear it and you can invest into it. It is a magical item. Um, it does provide... It, it provides a minus one penalty to auditory and visual perception checks when you're wearing the helmet, but it also gives a plus one bonus to saving throws against auditory and visual effects while you're wearing Ooh. it as well. An item as, as well, once per day, you can activate it and it fires all the barrels around the helmet in 360 degrees and shoots everything in a 20 foot emanation of you oh. <laughs> perfect i can't wait till we get shot by the damn tpk helmet <laughs> ruffy <laughs> no <laughs> can't see a bloody fucking thing with this thing on it is a little hard to see, but it does provide you a bonus to visual save against visual effects. So that's kind of a cool little bonus here. Everyone like quickly close their eyes. Uh, Saruk, you're you're tr trying to plead with it. Nobody hears like any sort of, there's no movement. There's no response. There's no 
clattering of like toenails on the, the sort of tile. And then like we see like from Hal's perspective with the rim of the hat down, he kind of like looks up and peeks for just a moment and the hallway's clear. It's gone. I've definitely bumped into the back of Annie <laughs> with his helmet on. Something's behind me. Don't worry. It's just the man with the safety hat. And you can, if you wish, you can make your way back towards the central chamber. He, he was there a second ago. You saw him, Saruk. But here, moments later, he's gone. I mean, maybe we look at the floor and run to that next one. And he point, I'll point to the one directly across. You got it. And I'm going to just shield up, smoke stick in hand, ready to crack and run, 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 run my ass to the door. Hustling, hustling across. We're doing our um, <laughs> CrossFit training for the morning. <laughs> I think Saruk is probably going to just shield check the door to open it. Do you know how hard it is to run with this damn thing on with horns? I oh. do. <laughs> it runs in the wall. You can feel free to open the door. The, the door. Remember, these doors are just like curtains that sort of like segment the hallway from the main chamber. There's no door. So you just like slide it over. Similar to the other side, it looks like there is a long straight chamber, but there's multiple T-sections here. Which way would you guys like to go? Let's just move to the first room. And I think just turning the corner. Please don't bite me, monster, in this room. Scooch it over to give everybody access. This room looks very similar to the room you saw before in that it gives a good view of the sort of tentacle canyon. This side does not provide any sort of line of sight on the main entryway, but smash furniture, there's like scratch marks in the walls, more of this sort of destroyed and left to rot vibe to this room. Take a look around. Spend a few minutes like searching it. I think so. All right. Feel free to give me the perception check and let me know what everyone else is doing during this sort of section of time. I'm just going to scooch back to the hallway. Hexagonal court shells. All right. You can go ahead and loot that one if you'd like, Anita. And, th and this one as well, if I can. Yeah, you probably have time for both. Wee! Farming. Saruk, I was thinking, mm. if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be wearing this bloody stupid thing anyway, isn't the point that I'm a little bit better off? Maybe I should be out in front. Yeah, all right. I mean, I can't see anything anyway, so I'm just gonna look down at the floor, and you guys tell me left or right, straight, left or right. How you give a nice, thorough inspection of the room and come up without anything looking interesting? Nothing catches your eye. Right. Well, that's your line. You say right at the top of your turn all the time. Straight. <laughs> no, they're straight from the... I've just pushed this way. All right. There is a tiny room that did not... This one, you know, there's no room like this off the other hallway, but this is a small room. It's, a, it's more of a chamber. It contains crumbling beds and tattered clothing. And there's two withered corpses lying on their floor. Their skin looks like it's split open with wounds just across their body. Otherwise, they, the corpses seem fairly well-preserved here in the dry desert air. But, uh, yeah, you catch the eyes, and, and, like, you definitely see that they have similar wounds on their bodies that you guys have experienced oh. yourself. My Chagua. <laughs> took the words right out of my god's damn mouth. Anything useful? Well, let's, let's take a look around. Yeah, you want to search? Search is going to... Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, he's not going to go there, Rev. He is. I must keep everyone within 15 feet. If you look at all these shiny things I'm getting. This is not the time for your ADHD. Respectfully. But uh, look. I know. I know. So you go through the room, looking at the beds. I mean, it's long shattered. I mean, based on your estimation, this, this room and these bodies have probably been here, left for decades of time. You don't find anything immediately uh, valuable within the wreckage, but you do notice like one of the corpses, it has tucked under its shirt that you can't really see. It looks like a bulge on its chest, like it might be wearing a necklace of some sort that might be valuable. I take a look at it. Is it a necklace? Yeah, it looks like a necklace. So you kind of like go here and you sort of like 
see the chain and you kind of are able to pull it and it has like some hefty weight to it. So you, you're like, oh, it could be something valuable. And as you go to sort of like pull it up, um, the eyes on this thing shoot open and its hand reaches out and grabs your hand. And I need you guys to roll initiative for me. Let's go. Uh, oh my, oh me, oh my. They are prone. No, I they think start they're prone. scary. Right. <laughs> I got the shivvies. No, we don't want the shiv. We want the bomb. Do I have a scout buff because scouting? You do have scout buff from Hal. Uh, he is doing scouting, so you take the plus two. 23 for Anita. How long does it take to invest in, in equipment? Invest in item is a... Uh, it's basically, it says... Uh, this process requires one or more interact actions. You should take the same amount of time. It's just an interact time. action, so it's like instant, yeah. All right, so I've, I'll have invest it in this by now. Yeah, you're, you can be invested in it, that's fine. This is such, like, unnecessarily cool music for we're grave robbing and the undead are angry <laughs> with us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I feel like we're being incentivized to do bad things. <laughs> this I got a natural one, which is perfect because I don't know what the fuck is going on with this family. Well, you got a minus one penalty on initiative thanks to the Thunderhelm, so it's perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we'll start the encounter. So, Rook, you are first to react. Okay. Say it with me, kids. Untap, upkeep, devise... I'm um, going at the one I can see. 27. What's my kit right now? This is dangerous as hell. I'll keep it. Uh, I dropped the smoke stick I'm carrying as a free action. There are some people here who are new. Uh, so Saruk has this backpack that he wears. There are way too many steampunk gears on it reaches back tags it and when that happens extending forward over his shoulder if you imagine like a like a gundam from the middle ages a ballista forward out as i'm going to draw my backpack ballista and then i'm going to shoot a ballista bolt over the head of someone who can't see right now and someone who's indiana jones <laughs> <laughs> at this target would a 27 hit them flat-footed yes they are flat-footed they have slightly increase AC from shooting through allies, but a 27 is enough to hit, not a crit. So hang on. I'm going to be that guy. Oh, what if it was a 28? I always forget my item bonus. Still a hit. Boo. OK. Whoa. They take 16 points of piercing damage. All right, they take the full 16. And that is my turn. All right, how? Uh, would I have my Copa shout? Uh, you've got one push in one hand and you got your hand, other hand's free, right? So I think so. Yes. So I think Hal reaches down and grabs onto this creature as he's grabbing onto the necklace. It grabs his arm and then Hal re-grasps onto the person's clothing, uh, maybe their shoulder and kind of moves him around and he does a snagging strike. Okay. Whoops, that is a accidental. Question marks. Question, question marks, marks hit. 26 <laughs> uh, is a hit. That is going to be 18 points of slashing damage. All right. It takes the full 18 points of slashing damage and you're snagging it. So it's now flat footed unless it moves away from you. And I think he's going to do an exacting strike using the press feature on the exacting strike that means if he misses he doesn't get a map attack penalty on this next strike but if he okay. hits then he'll do something else so second attack exacting strike with map it is flat footed uh 13 is not going to hit it's not going to hit but then he doesn't have so he's going to make a third attack um, at another minus five map because he missed. Yep, because exacting strike does not make your map go up. Correct. And who says you don't attack three times in one turn? Oh, oh that's, that's a natural one. Everyone on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. <laughs> We've proved it. Three attacks is the way to go. If yeah, look at that. you use exacting strike. So that is a crit. Let's get crits in chat, everyone. How? go ahead and roll critical hit damage. 
30. 30 points of slashing damage. Oh, damn. All right, it takes the entire 30 points of damage. It's looking pretty hurt, but it is not dead. That's all three actions, three attacks. It's twice in my turn. All right, Anita. All right, so Anita would use her first two actions to command Wyber to go in the first room on the right and hit the first hostile enemy that he sees. Let me go 40 first. Because I don't know how far they're strong. 40. So that's one. Woo! Yeah, I think the problem with Wybert, though, too, let me see, is like everything. He's yeah, a big boy. He's big, so everything's half moving for him. So it's like difficult right. terrain for that's him. That's two actions. Two actions to move to this spot. Yeah, he does have fast speed, right? He has 40 feet of movement. Yeah, so he can get there in mm -hmm. two moves. Right. Yeah. So he hits this thing that's already badly injured. Wyber smash. Sort of Wyber smashing it. Like Hal's getting like squished pretty tight. It's like really cramped for space in here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Wyber's a big boy. How's that? Yeah, that's a 20. Dirty 20. That is a miss. All right. And then Anita uses her last action to close her eyes. Just in case. Closing the eyes just in case. Smart. That brings us to these creatures' turn. First action, this dude in the corner. He does stand up. So he moves the prone condition. Like, gets to his feet. I think he will sort of like, try to stride into position with Hal and... His last action, I guess it's a step more than a stride, um, but his last action is to target Hal with what appears to be a surprisingly agile, like, karate chop to your neck. Hmm. Oh. But with a dirty 20, that is a miss, and they are unable to hit you. The one that you're kind of, like, holding stands up with his first action, which is a move action that triggers an opportunity attack. Yes. I would like to take it. Take your opportunity attack. He does not have Kip up like Mukta. He is still flat-footed. He is still flat-footed because uh multitude of reasons, but feel free to take that flat-footed strike. Seventeen. That's going to be a miss. Oh, Hero point. <laughs> I used my hero point. Well, chat. Oh, look at that. <laughs> RKI Richard RPG is, is enabling Ricardo. Wowie. That guy seems like a cool guy. Feel free to give yourself <laughs> another hero point and re-roll. That turns it 17 into a 28, which is a hit. But not a crit. For 10 slashing damage. All right, 10 slashing damage. Uh, but he does stand up. You slash 10 more points of damage. And then this one that's karate chopping you in the neck, this one kind of looks at you and very quickly does like a quick like one, two flurry of blow. A stunning, it's a stunning flurry. Undead monk. Undead monk. <laughs> so first strike, it basically does two strikes against you. First strike is a 33, which is not a crit, but it is a hit. And the second one takes that map. The second one is a 15, which is a miss. So just one hit will do the damage. Uh, that is 11 points of bludgeoning combined with two points of negative energy for a total of 13 damage Ooh, to you. Now. So I think Saruk is going to react. Uh, I realize we didn't. I don't mean to. Good point. Using a joke that the rules layer on it is, is narrative or uh, we're in a good moment in time to do that. I don't mean to rules layer, but I realized I forgot to do something last time. Uh, for those of you who are new, out of nowhere, a emerald jaguar manifests in the space between the really creepy fucking thing and and uh, Pal latches on to the like the arm, pulls it back such that the strike hits a little less and then the Jaguar demanifests mechanically. I'm gonna use 
the berating step. So uh, Hal gets resistance equal to my level plus two, so resistance eight. And unless they've changed this in an errata, that applies to all the different sources of damage. I, I have some champions I'm running for, and they pointed that out to me on Tuesday. So it, if it's resistant all damage, then yeah. Yeah. So it should entirely shut off the negative, and then the 11 is reduced by 8. So So you take 3 total. And then Hal can step right. if he wants to. I don't know you where the hell he's going to step. That room is crowded, but... Yeah, you can't step away from them. Okay, you stay you stay in range to keep it like uh, snagged. Yep. So only three points of damage. Bad. Fortitude save. So after that, you feel like part of the like strike is like almost like um, affecting you. So I do need a fortitude save. Ooh. Come on. Isn't that if both hit? Yes, but this is something else. You did not get. Both didn't hit, so you didn't get the stunning flurry, but you are getting hit with a different effect on the unarmed strike itself. It hits you, and it hits a nerve, and the nerve sort of, like, sends, like, something up into your brain that scrambles it just a bit, and the world gets a little fuzzy, and things get a little double vision for you, Hal. You are now stupefied one. Oh, even more stupefied than normal. This is a hard feat. <laughs> stupefied two now. We smart party. We think that. Um, yes, I am. The inventor and the investigator brofist. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then... Yeah, I think it will then step back away from you, removing the flat-footed condition on itself with its third and final action. And that's all their turns. Ruficule, are you ready to, f to get in there and fight some undead monks? Can I get in there? Yeah, I mean it's 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 crowded, but you can definitely squeeze in there. All right, where can I end up? I mean, there's a square here, there's a square here, there's All a square right. back here. So I'm going to use uh... since Wybert's so big, he takes up the whole room, and he couldn't even fit in there. <laughs> so everyone's just sort of sharing space with Wybert, even though mechanically it's not quite how it works. But in this fight, it's working that way. Someone will watch this on YouTube and scream at you. You've got the rules wrong, but I appreciate you because otherwise Wybert can't do shit. Otherwise, Wybert can't get in there at all, yeah. I'm going to squeeze by Wybert and... God, Wybert, move your fat ass. And, uh... <laughs> a bunch of junk in that trunk. Literally, it's where we keep our stuff. <laughs> to draw my pistol, right? Stride towards an enemy that I can see. Kind of banging my this damn helmet against Wybert as I'm walking through. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I'm going to use uh, my first action to shoot this guy in the face. All right, go ahead and make that attack roll. That's a 33. Nice. 33, that is a hit. Unfortunately, not a crit. That's fine. That's seven points of damage. Nice. All right. Takes the full damage. Still up. Uh, <laughs> it is now flat-footed to my next melee strike due to sword and pistol. Bring it on. And I'm going to take a uh, reloading strike at map. So you see me shoot in the face, twirl the gun, and it breaks open. At the same time, with my other hand, I bring up a bullet, toss it into the gun, and then bring the hand back down and karate chop him. Just like they karate chopped Hal. Let's see if the dice reward your creativity. They will. I'm manifesting this. Remember that dragon? Oh boy, it does! Let's go. Manifest every time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> manifest it all. Apparently, I have wishy powers. Place. I didn't know. I'm gonna go talk yeah. That's a critical <laughs> hit. I wish it was on the firearm, but it is pretty awesome. Roll that crit hit damage. 14 points Die. of damage. All right, 14 points of damage, and he has to make a basic fortitude saving throw, which they fail and become slowed one. Slowed one. Oh, like it's already like half like undead and you've cracked it and now it's like I think maybe like its spine is like misaligned so it can't like move right anymore and uh, for my third action I'm going to just aid the next attack with a feint and that's my turn bringing us to the top of round two Saruk Richard you didn't yell at me about that thing that I forgot to trigger 
Ah, mm. sorry. I, it's the helmet. I can't see or hear a damn thing. Yeah, that's fair. I, <laughs> I believe you. Okay. Uh, shit all over it. I think this turn is really, really awkward. I think what Saruk has to do is... Uh, what Saruk has to do is when it's not his turn, he has to check the mechanics of putting up the backpack ballista because I'm not leaving this thing in the middle of this place as we're running. So rather, my smoke stick is going to stay in the square Saruk is in currently. Saruk is going to step. That puts everybody measuring in reaction range. I uh, What do I do with my last two actions? I guess... This is a really bad idea. Saruk is going to drop his shield. Interacts to draw his Gisele. And just like blindly fire forward at the... Is this man's actually flat-footed back here in the corner? Uh, no, it was just in, my, just in my melee. And it's already gone. Got it. Uh, I think I'm still going to try to clean up the one in the back so turning off all the important things wow i think this is the first time in in Surik's whole career i'm using my dexterity to attack this is weird we're not devising a stratagem we're just doing it faint attack then yeah go ahead and make your faint your dc 20 check uh 16 not quite enough to help but it doesn't hurt just checking all the things Brah. Blindly firing the into the room. Mm. Mm. You did say blindly. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> I'm debating. Yeah, you know what? I, I think with expediency, Saruk's brain and Tommy's brain say hero point reroll, so I'm going to... There we go. 24 to hit? Perfect. Uh, 24 would be a hit except for the small cover that's provided by shooting through your allies and it turns into no miss. Boo. No, Wybert. Boo. Damn it, Wybert. <laughs> okay. Wybert, how? Yeah. And Unfortunately, is... yeah, that is a miss by one. Otherwise, my turn. Heck. Um, I think at this point, Anita, you don't see anything, but you hear the sort of like click clack of feet kind of come up the hallway behind you and you can you can feel like the licking of like tongue on lips and like the sniffing and damn it steve this is not how i wanted to hear click clack it's supposed to be good and feel like the city heck <laughs> you feel like there's something near your eyes are closed but you have sense of what's around you and you feel like something has approached you from behind how it is your turn i think Hal is going to use a scout's charge as he strides closer to this creature in the corner and he will do a feint using stealth instead of deception to attempt to make it flat-footed. That is a 27. And that is definitely a success. So it is flat-footed to your strike. All right. And as part of Scout's charge, I get to strike this creature one time. Uh, 23 is a hit thanks to the flat-footed condition. The feint actually pays off here and makes it a hit. Oh, uh, eight points of damage. Ooh, it, it takes the eight points of damage, but it's not enough to, to, to down it. And, uh, stupefied? Uh, the stupefied stays. Okay. Stupefy is not one of those conditions that auto auto decrements itself. I don't believe. Yeah, there's gonna be like a specific on the what give them stupefied. Otherwise, I I think you have to sleep it off. I forget. Or even like greater restoration it off. Um, Anita, you feel there's something behind you, but you're not looking at it. Um, feeling the hairs on the back of her neck stand up, Anita, still with her eyes closed, is going to use the wall to guide her. So I'm going to take the penalty of, like, moving half my speed. Yeah, you can move blinded, it's just you're moving at difficult terrain, so everything takes extra movement. Yeah, so I'm going to go to... I'm going to use my movement to go to Saruk, or near Saruk. 
sorry, I'm blind. You can only move two squares anyways with the stride because you only have each each move is ten feet, so that's you can move right next to Rook, you just can't go in this square. For I guess for multiple reasons, but you are able to get like feel your way away from this thing. All right, and then I say, I feel something, the back of my neck, but the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. And then for my third action, I'm going to, uh, I didn't have it pulled out. I'm going to pull out the smoke stick just in case. Just feeling for, feeling for like my equipment and I pull it out. So one action stride, one action pull out the smoke stick, right? Mm hmm So that's one action. Oh yeah, I have another one. And then for my third action, I'm going to open up the smoke stick and then obscure the vision in this area. Okay. I really hope this works. Mm hmm So you, you, you're like, you're doing it, but you're like holding it, right? So it's like basically on your square. Yes, it's on my square. And then Wybert still has one. And it's 10 foot emanation. Is that correct? Uh, uh, five foot. So should be five foot emanation. So basically, mm -hmm. everywhere around her. Okay. And then, why but still has one? Is this is this near death zombie monk within his reach? Yes. All right. We'll try to kill it with why but smash. Why but smash. Oh, problem is here too like the smoke thing goes up it does a um around anita this like emanation of smoke it fills saruk square and saruk you're in the smoke so like the smoke is now around you and you're having a hard time looking into the room you're feeling it based off senses now because your vision's not reaching into that room um 28 is a hit all right cool so that would be ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Fiber's karate smash kills this, like, undead monk. Yeah. Whoa! And it, uh, it is now dead. Or, you know. That's it for my turn. Unalived. Maybe a little bit lesser than it was. Unalive. 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 Prone. Prone, yes. I think he's going to continue to target Hal. And is going to try to do its. Yeah, let's just start with a uh, stunning flurry on how. So it's going to do two melee strikes. First strike is a critical hit. It's 19 on the dice for a total of uh, 36. So. So that's a critical hit. It's going to be 36 points of damage Ooh, total. Well, so I'm going to use Eight of its reaction. Damn. Right. So interestingly, I think if Hal steps back now and out of range before the second attack comes, I think Hal can dodge it. Anyway, around it, it avoids all the negative and 20. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't things. see um, the, the trigger doesn't say you have to see it. So even though you don't have sight, you can still feel the like connection with your allies. So that still works for sure. Does within range. Uh, so is that twenty-eight points of damage? That's so twenty. It's... All told, you resist all the negative eight points of the of the bludgeoning. So. Yep, 20. Oh, 20. Really? Yeah, it's 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 eight off each damage type because it's resist all, which is a very powerful sort of resist to have. I will step into the corner. What an interesting rules interaction. What happens with the rest of? Does it just waste the action? No, I'm going to say because it's like an action that his action allows both stri strikes to go off combined as one attack, I'm going to let him get his second attack off before the step happens. St second strike with the penalty really quick. Uh, 26, so they both do hit. This one's not a crit. So there's going to be a lot of rolls here in a second. So we're going to attack on 13 more damage. They're combined all into one, so it's really like... Because it's the it's so it's really thirty nine points of bludgeoning and ten points of necrotic, which the end result is just take thirteen more damage. Yeah. If the necrotic was lower, they could have just not still not taken any. Negative. Okay, so don't use the negative. Watsy term. Did I say necrotic? Oh my god! You I, did. You get a hero point just for correcting me. Yeah, um, I do. <laughs> okay. So there's a bunch of things that happen here. Firstly, oh, great. let's start with um, the stunning flurry save, which is. 
since they both hit, you need to make a fortitude saving throw or be stunned. Could use a hero point from somebody. Oh, you don't need it. Just roll natural 20. Yeah, just Ooh. roll. Right. Just roll well. Bam. So you are completely avoid the stun. All right. Perfect. Secondly, because you got a critical hit with an unarmed attack and it has a sort of critical hit specialization, I need you to make a another 42 save against the critical hit. Uh, strike. Uh, 27 is a success, so you are not slowed. Lastly, you got hit by two. You got two more unarmed strikes, so I need two more fortitude saving throws. How tough is how? We're about to find out. Four fortitude saving throws in one round against this monk. That's a success with a 24. And the last one is a natural 20. Bro. Let's go. Prince this what? monk just unleashed his like whole like combo that he practiced his whole life on you. And at the end result, when he it should be like a killing blow, you sort of like liberating step away from him, fairly unscathed, impressively. Combine all the all the unscathed from all the additional effects that he just tried to put on your body that you resisted. All that said, that was one action he spent. And you stepped out of his range. I think his next action will be to step back into this corner and his third and final action to try to catch a, dis a distracted refi with a minus 10 map and that's a critical miss all right refi no you get your mistaken friend i'm the one hitting you and i'm gonna shoot him in the face <laughs> okay Uh, that's a hit, and not a crit. Not bad. Uh, nine points of damage, and he is now flat-footed to my next strike, which yes. once again is a reloading strike as I spin the gun, break the barrel, and reload at the same time as striking. Not a natural 20 this time, although I was really hoping to will it into existence. Uh, that is a That's miss. That's fine. I've actually been waiting for that, because for my third action, I'm going to use Follow-Up Strike. Ooh. Richard, that has so much you've activated my trap card energy. Nani! It triggers when I've missed with, uh, missed with the melee strike previously. I get to take another attack of the same map, pretty much. Oh, okay. nice. It's very nice. similar to what Hal's doing, but in a slightly different manner, right? Mm-hmm. So I strike again. Same map. Yep. Nice. 23. My hero. All right, thanks to the flat-footed condition. Oh, does it have flat-footed? Or is it only in the next melee strike? Uh, let me double check that. Are you sort Just for of cool story? factor, I'm going to let it ride and you can roll damage. Thanks to the flat-footed condition. But I'm not sure if the flat-footed continues through the whole turn or just the next melee strike. It'd be next melee, technically. Really yeah. cool. But I'll, I'll, it's cool in this moment, and I will allow it to ride, so deal that damage. All right. Another nine points of damage. Nine more points. And that is my turn, all three actions. All right. Saroop. Okay, this turn is so fucking awkward. Uh, we believe the Hound of Tindalos is behind us. I just watched Hal get mollywopped. That's not concerning at all. No, nope. oh, I, I didn't have him visibly on the initiative tracker, so I added him visually. Great, great, <laughs> good. Okay, so I think what it's got to be. Plus uh, twenty-two. Yeah, I know it's bad. Don't remind me. <laughs> so I, I guess <laughs> I have to assume the boys are going to be fine in there. Uh, as a free action, Saruk is going to drop the backpack. I thought it took like five minutes to say that thing, but it's just an interact action. So the the Gundam cannon clatters down in the square as Danner goes. Uh, I'll use my first dashing action even to pick up my shield. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get data. I'm going to action. The second is with eyes open, hoping the concealing cloud is sufficient. Saruk is gonna stride around Anita. 
still within the fog. Heck, damn you, wall. Yep, still and within then. the fog. There's like a, you see, like, th you can see you're concealed, right? You can see kind of out in the hallway this creature standing there. You're, you're pretty much aware of its presence. It's just sort of concealed from the fog. You don't have visual, full visual sight on it in the smoke. My body has a shield, or hopefully my shield. I'm just gonna raise my shield and brace. And at the end of your turn, you feel that like gaze trying to like press into you, but the smoke in the concealment is blocking so your visual contact. And you're not a you don't have to make any save or, or roll. You are uh, good. And they said the alchemist was bad. Well, TBK, and I'll run gatekeepers for you guys. And it'll be <laughs> dope as hell. I won't beat you up with Hounds of Tindalos. Don't tempt me with a good time. Oh, I will. <laughs> it's what I do professionally. <laughs> <laughs> with its first action it uses its angled entry ability to jump like just sort of like you just kind of watch as you you can't really get a good visual on it but it looks like it sort of folds itself back into the wall and uh, and like you can all feel it appear on the other side of you so it feels like it's crawled back out of the wall on the north side of you guys now you position yourself between it and anita but it's in one movement has teleport itself to the other side of the chamber and you hear like the, the footsteps of it walking back around that corner and that's where its turn ends Hal I think Hal is going to scout's charge up into this creature okay I'll attempt a feint using stealth that is a 27 again Yep, it's flat-footed to the next strike. It's flat-footed to the next strike, which is going to be a regular strike, since that's what Scout's Charge is. Just a regular strike. Regular strike. Regular uh, charge. That is a hit, thanks to the flat-footed condition. The feint again, paying off. Every little bonus matters. 13, 13 points of damage. I think Hal is going to make a map attack using Snagging Strike. Okay. Oh. Ooh, that's a critical miss. Ends my turn. Anita. All right. So Anita is going to command Wyber to continue and try to kill this thing. So she's going to give. She's going to use one action for two. Let's see first. All right. Wyber smash! Wyber smash! Wyber smash! How's that? Ooh, that's a natural one. That's a critical miss. That is a critical miss. But Wyber's gonna try again! How's that? smash! For a 21. Right. Uh, 21 is gonna be a miss. Damn. All right. So it's like why has got these really big, powerful like slams. And like this thing is just like definitely like kind of like nimbly dodging out of the way. Mr. Undead Monk. All right. How long does the smoke stick last? I'm sorry. Let me check. I'm going to check a minute. I think that oh, we got plenty of time. All right. So we have a lot of time and I still have to use my action to keep my eyes closed. It, it just keep your eyes closed. You're blind. It's fine. You don't have to spend an action. It's an action if you want to avert your gaze to give yourself a bonus against a visual check. But by closing your eyes, you're completely avoiding it. And like Saruk, when when Saruk feels pins and needles that don't turn into lacerations, it works. You can open your eyes. All right. So Anita is going to open her eyes. Is that a free action, or yep. did I just spend an action? All right. Cool. Uh, and then she wants to test out a theory about killing these lights, so... But I can't reach it. What do I do? You know what? I'm just gonna step into the corner right here. Okay. Wait, actually, no, no. I, I don't want to leave Saruk. So I'll just stay right there. Okay. 
and avert my gaze just in case. Mm. Okay, just in case. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Our cool little monk dude getting pinned in the corner here. He's going to try his luck at Ruffy. How is too tough. Took his full barrage. So he's going to pick out an easier target. Spins his eyes over oh, on Ruffy. Ruffy. And will use his stunning flurry to make two strikes on Ruffy. First strike. Ooh, Bro. that's a critical hit. 34. Bish. I you are presume within. that... No, oh, you're out of range for Ruffy. Boo. All right, so that first hit's going to be critical. That's Gosh. a low damage roll, 26. Uh, second right. strike comes in, and that is a hit just, just barely. Yep, just a hit. So that's going to be 15 more points of damage. So a total of 41 points of damage. Mm -hmm. And then because they both hit, we have quite a few uh, checks to make, just like Hal did. There's four fortitude saves coming. So we'll start with the stunning flurry, which is a fortitude save against the stun effect. That is a failure, but not a critical failure, unless you have a hero point and you want to spend it. It's going to make you stunned one. There's two, yeah, I'll use a hero point. Okay. Fun. Yes. Oh, critical success. That's a good hero point right there. So you, you are not stunned. And then secondly, we will do the the critical hit effect, which is um, you need to make another 42 save against the critical hit or be slowed. Another success. You are not slowed. And then we have the two more 42 saves from each. Like each of these strikes has a little bit of something else in them uh the first one's a failure the second one is also a failure so no hero points to spend on those nope you begin to stupefy All right. you go from stupefied one from the first strike and then you blink and stupefied two from the second strike hey look that's reptile got a hero point who did you oh, got a hero point from all oh. rpg <laughs> Ow. Wow! All right, I'll re-roll one of those. Natural <laughs> twenty. Yes. My God. Those are some good hero good. points. Good value hero points. All right. All of that to say, that was only one. That was only one action is taken so far. Good. Damn, monks are cool. But he's got a really high. He's already used like two attacks, so he's already got a huge multiple attack penalty. You know. All right, well, he's just going to put out the rest of his, his attacks at full map penalties. 21's a miss, and 13's a critical miss, and that's his turn. Refi. Oh, you poor already dead fool. I don't use my brain anyway. He doesn't. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I'm going to shoot him in the face. 31 is a hit. Hit, not a crit. Eight points of damage. Okay. And it's now flat-footed against my it next is. strike. And I'm going to do a reloading strike for my second action. Oh. It's a miss. And for my third action, I'm going to step, because I can't take that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. Perfect. All right, Saruk. So okay, the Hunter's Endelos is somewhere generally north, but can be wherever in each and every hell it wants to be. I hate this so much. Uh, da -da. First action, Saruk is going to manually store his backpack ballista. Step here. I know there's a wall. Shut up. I'll stride. I just want to go to where my Giselle is and then interact to pick up my Giselle. What an eventful turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Hound does something off screen that we don't see, but he doesn't appear to do anything in range of you to make his presence known. Yeah, snagging strike. 28 to hit. 
that is 18 points of damage. It is now flat-footed to my next exacting strike. Yep, he's flat-footed to everyone as long as he's in range of you. Ooh, that was so close to natural 20. Uh, 18 is a miss. But since I did an exacting strike, I will make another strike with a minus five map. Exactly. Come on. Bro. Oh. 20 is still a miss. But he's still snagged. Come on, Wybert. Kick his ass. Beep boop, beep boop. <laughs> Anita. It's five footed this time. Pretend it's a dog. <laughs> That's a fucking callback. That's a callback. What a callback. All right, so another Wybert smash from Wybert. So he's going to. Uh, and it's con going to continue and command him to try and fucking kill this thing. So. Two actions. Wybert smash. Three actions. No. Oh. Uh, first one's a miss. The second one. Yes, my There we go. Buddy. That's a hit. Boom. <laughs> oh. Okay, 10, ten points, points of, damage. of damage. Still alive, just hanging on, oh. just barely. Oh, could Wybert, perchance, be in a square that would provide cover for both Halbrin and Breffy? Ooh, it's an interesting question. I think not against not against melee strikes, I don't think so. Oh, because he's tall. I mean, technically he shouldn't be allowed to be in this room because he's sharing oh. squares with people. And I feel like allowing your allies to get full cover is probably a little too much. Now, if they want to spend an action to take cover behind him, I will allow that. He can provide cover, but he won't give it automatically. All right. Damn. All right. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna. Wobber's gonna hit, try and hit him for the last time for his third action. What's up? No, it's a critical miss. And then Anita would continue to. Oh, actually, Anita would. It was all three actions, though, right? For Wybert, I still have one. Oh, I see. You Anita gave him still three. Has one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Use two to yeah, you're right. Is that yeah. work? I think so, so for Anita's action she'll grab a because it worked before, she'll grab a frost vial. Okay. That's it for my turn. Alright, this monk in one last chance targets Hal, who's within you're snagging him, he's gonna use this. He like kinda grabs your inside of your arm and tries to open up your chest and do a double strike. Uh, let's see if he's got what it takes. He's been getting a lot of crits on you. First one is a hit, but not a crit. You are within range of Saruk on this one. So that's going to be 10, which is almost completely negated, but he gets the second one. Uh, the second one is a miss. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, liberating step and react. So one bludgeoning damage. Yeah, it's one bludgeoning damage, Hal. Nice. So strong. Why did you take 49? 49? No! I know you're stupefied and counting is hard, but no. I was amazed at the strength of that ability. God damn it. There is only one fortitude save that needs to be made for you. You can step, you can step if, you if you wish. It'll break the flat footed, but. Yeah, no problem. You're not affected by it. You're not re stupefied or stupefied more. Yeah, step into him more. I guess he's just gonna keep doing his thing. That's a critical miss with a natural one. And this last one is a 24. Oh, 24 is actually a hit. He gets one last melee strike off for 14 points of damage. Another fortitude safe. Ooh, that's a failure. Makes you stupefied too. All right, Ruffy. I'm surprised this fight went as long as it did. I thought it was going to be a pushover. Well, when half the team is out here holding the door. That's true. I'm going to use two action to use Drifter's Juke. 
Ooh. So I'm going to step, strike with uh, my unarmed strike first. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. Nice. Six Still points alive. of damage. I'm going to step. Uh huh. And strike now with my dueling pistol. Okay. Now you don't have anything where it gives you flat footed if you shoot after a melee strike or if you stay in range. Uh, the thing Either is, way, that it, it, w it would not be able to take attack of opportunity on me. Got it. If I shot within range, but I stepped anyway, so. He is flat-footed just because shoot. Hal's still still snagging him, you know? So he is flat-footed. Oh, that's a natural one. No. All right. Just for the coolness of this moment and this ninja, this monk fight, I want to give you... I haven't given really hero points. I'm going to give you just a hero point to reroll this one roll. If you roll a natural one again, then, you know, the dice is, like, saying whatever is over, but, like... This is too cool of a moment to, like, not give you another shot. <laughs> nice. 23. 23 is a hit. Thanks to the flat-footed condition. Nice. Max damage. 13 damage. Max damage is Ooh. enough. Nice. Oh, just one. The sort of, like, head explodes. As he, like, how still, like, snagging. You got that arm, and then the head explodes, and then it goes limp. And we are out of initiative as the is he uh, dead is there any more i can't see anything Sirik is gonna pick up his smoke stick we can't either but i think it's here that's for the best he's just ready to pop his smoke stick waiting to see if it moves or if we hear it yeah it, it seems all quiet on the hound front like there's no sign of it there's no it's not making any movements the sort of like smoke stick goes off for, like the full minute, providing you the visual cover you need, which is about the same amount of time that Hal and Ruffy will need to shake out of their stupefied condition, which uh, fades on its own after about a minute. And Hal, uh, you finally get a chance to look at the sort of uh, necklace that you were looking for this whole time. And you pull it out, and it is a sort of um, not super valuable, but it's almost like a tin bry necklace it's like a holy symbol on a chain around this creature's neck but it doesn't look super valuable but it is a bry holy symbol if you'd like to keep it oh i think he would hand it up to nita say you want this i i, I can't use it all right i take it in our Get very... in bum. <laughs> god damn it yeah no nah, you both almost died for this necklace yeah in the evening space, Hal's, or I'm not Hal, uh, Surik is going to pull another uh, backpack quest to bolt out from his backpack and start screwing it together to take the minute to reload. Perfect. And um, I think that's the last shot we get as the, the sort of um, the camera kind of pulls out from the hallway where you guys are scrambling to like get ready, like waiting for like any sort of like movement. The camera kind of pulls down the hallway back far away towards like the main chamber. We see sort of like standing on the, t the ceiling of the main chamber way up high, just kind of floating in the air. The like, uh, the hound is just kind of floating there. Per almost looks like it's floating upside down, perched on the ceiling, although it's not actually touching. It's just kind of floating right on the, the, the corner in the ceiling. And the camera pulls out the front door and fades to black. And that's going to do it for tonight's episode because we went long over time on that fight, which... Our rolls. Yeah. You'd be like us sometimes. Undead mock fights. You guys avoided the worst of their abilities. Um, I think catching in the hero point to remove the, the sort of stunned condition or slow condition was key. They have one ability here, uh, which you didn't get to see, which I'm a little sad about, but it's a two action ability called Steel Breath, which is to say if you are either stunned or slowed, or paralyzed or unconscious, it basically does that Dementor's Kiss thing where it tries to like suck your soul out. Um, and it can follow up the, 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 yeah. Stamp it. This place is mean enough. We want and to And you know live. what? You guys, Rick, or sorry, Hal took the whole like four, four saves in stride. Ruffy Kill avoided the, the, the worst of it. Otherwise, 
you know, it would have been because the one action to do that that double strike and then the, the third, second, third action to steal your soul is uh, rough. And guess what? You avoided it because you guys are Pathfinder pros, and you learn that your smoke stick plan worked out. It provides you the cover you needed to avoid the visual effect from the hound, which means you guys have a plan. Then. All that being said, it was a long night. It was a fun night, and you guys might feel a little more optimistic about your chances after uh, after that. And let's not forget how got the necklace. It was worth it for the necklace. Do it for the bling. Might have been worth it for the the helmet though that shoots at 360 degrees. That's that's seems very roughy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> have you ever heard the phrase "None of my eyes for every last one of your eyes"? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna do it for us this week on Alcastar. Big thanks to Nina, Richard, Ricardo, Tommy uh, for playing. It's fun as always. Been fun session. Huge shout out to all of our patrons. Who support us Patreon. on Patreon. Thank you, thank uh, you. Let's, let's give a shout out to them real quick. Uh, give us a look at patreon.com slash recall knowledge. So you can get behind the scenes looks at some of our upcoming content and early releases of episodes before they hit YouTube. And your support just goes a really long way. Funding everything we want to do on this channel. Let's give a shout out to them. Big thanks. David Sim, Jason Irvin, Awal Jalil, Ellie Boyle, Jay, Mark Paquette, Paul G, Sandra Wagner, Sam Skaggs, you guys are all amazing and big, big thanks to you for Thank you. for helping Thank support you. us here. Also, if you're a Patreon, you get access to the ch this super really cool private channel that gets all the tea. Also, from what we get I've to noticed. fund our horrible, terrible habit of screaming and looting at the top of our lungs. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we if do. you're a patron, you can get map requests. Our Ooh, new, our, our January map request, map pack with a cobbled streets of Alpenstar should go up this weekend ish. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, that'll nice. be good. Uh, we didn't get, we usually try to do it the first week, but I was on vacation, so we're a little behind, but we'll get it out. Don't worry, it's coming. There's a lot of cool stuff on our Patreon and just a good way to, for you guys to thank us for our show because we want to thank you for making it happen. Uh, uh, big thanks to Molten Hosting for sponsoring us. Big thanks. Molten. They're so hot. They're One hot. Word. Use use that code recall knowledge. One word. One word. One word. Uh, you get your first month for free. Check them out at moltenhosting.com. They don't actually have any idea that we're using them to trash on the OGL, but I don't think they'd probably mind too much. I don't run <laughs> my scripts through like molten hosting uh, press secretary or anything. I just do it. I'm just waiting for Versace Evercraft to show up in the chat in the first five minutes. <laughs> just none me. Oh, oh god. <laughs> oh no. For legal reasons. <laughs> Tommy, what you got going on? Hi, all of the people who are brand new to this stream who showed up rating. My name is Tommy. I do a little thing called Black Dragon Gaming, which is the short term for saying I am a professional dungeon master, third party content creator, YouTuber, and generally man of entirely too many hats. I put out today, I have a very long request line and I roll random for it because I way back in the early days of my career i kept all the requests on a notepad file and i lost the order because brain so it's just we're pressing buttons and grabbing that way but i uh i got one that came out from around the time uh moon knight was new on disney plus and the request was just random bullshit go thaumaturge weapon improviser don't take a weapon implement run with it and it was a super big blast. I probably won't have a lot of content out for a couple of weeks. I'm going to be moving at the end of the month. So there's a running around like a those birds outside of this place with their head cut off. But I do have a bunch of seats coming open in a lot of professionally run awesome, very good games. If you have the coins to toss to your Witcher, I've got three seats for Bloodlords. I have told everyone in my Discord, and I'll extend this to you, I guarantee I will let you kick a paladin if you come play Bloodlords with me, and that's what everybody wants. Uh, likewise, it's going to be on hiatus for a little bit, because turns out what I do in my job the most, the biggest thing I have to fight is scheduling conflicts, and that's what people pay me the good money for, that BBEG. Mm -hmm. But we wrapped book one of uh, Fist of the Ruby Phoenix, which took three days in game to get through an entire book's worth of Adventure Path content. And that blows my mind. But uh, when that kicks back up, we have three spots open uh, for that as well. There should be a Discord link in 
all of that big old links where schedules and things are. You don't want to miss it. I'm actually very excited for Bloodlords. I, I have a lot of goody two shoes all the time, and now it's like, well, what if, what if the dystopia, but we're on the side of the bad guys? You got like South of Alconstar. South of Alconstar is, is next, right? Uh, East-ish. It's like Alconstar, Mana Waste, Nex, Geb, and the, the game takes place in Geb, which is the state, which is like entirely run by. Uh, things you find in the bottom of the dungeon alongside the dragon and you stab them and like the farms are run by way too many zombies and it's i'm really excited for it because I, I like to much like this man's over to my left who runs dark spooky edgy content i too enjoy dark spooky edgy content and <laughs> going in and the blood lords is tuesday night though right yeah Yep, Tuesday nights from 6 to 10 Central Time. I would put the Hammer Time timestamp in somewhere, but I'll let you guys do the, the conversions back and forth. And then Ruby Phoenix is Sunday mornings, 11.15 to 3.15. There was a boop. Yeah, that was yeah. a beep boop. That was Wyvern. Boop. Dang it, Wyvern. Yeah, I was just going to say, for all those Wyvern. people, you know, who are looking to get into Pathfinder, getting a professionally DM game by someone as awesome as Tommy is a great mm -hmm. option for jumping into that. So I definitely take a lot of... in the. the you know, it's almost like... There might be a lot of new people coming into Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and we take anybody from, I've played 2E since it was the playtest, to, well, you know, I want to try a new thing, and wherever in between, I am, I am the people in my space, because if someone's an asshole, I will, I don't like to pick up the ban hammer, but I do relish the opportunity to get assholes out of my space, so, like, everybody is inclusive, everybody is cool, we are more than happy to teach you how to play a game. Honestly, most of my players are 1E vets, and so, like, teach you how to play Tui, that's so much easier. Yeah, go check out Tommy's uh, Black Dragon Gaming. There's a Discord, there's a Twitter, there's a Patreon. There's a all that you can, if you want to play it, Tommy's probably running it. Do it, like, click Almost the link. every day of the week, so go check. I, I literally, every day but Wednesday, but that's because I'm here. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. And speaking of Wednesday, we're going to be back next Wednesday, January 25th at 7 o'clock, I believe that's on are we you you mentioned moving time i hadn't checked with you about i should be schedules. fine i so i got approved for the place i was going to move to and then i didn't hear for them in a week and then i called them and they're like yeah we're waiting on the city to go do this thing so what's going to happen is either a tomorrow i'm going to go there get the information pose as my landlord call the city and see if they're actually doing you know the the real investigative <laughs> shit uh b move somewhere else or c pursue uh, lead right <laughs> my my last day where i am currently is on a tuesday and i will uh my partner was the one who was like yeah come here i know some people who moved here and it was dope and then that shoe fell i was like hey so uh help and so in the turbo worst case i will crash at her place and set up everything in the, the very small room and i don't know what i'm gonna do with achilles <laughs> Uh, there might be a cat for a stream, but that will get you guys Perfect. more content. Yes, Don't worry about it. Awesome. Too. Perfect. So uh, we should be on for next Wednesday, January 25th at 7 p.m. Pacific as we continue unraveling the mysteries within the cradle, of course. Until then, we implore you to stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time. See you. Bam, 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 bam.